Welcome in, everybody. Everybody take your seat for our holiday special. Six months early, five months early. I don't know how time works. <coughs> Actually, July is one of those months that makes me upset because it messed up the order of everything. Like, October is not the eighth month. It's the tenth month now. Because of July and August. Mm -hmm. We should just expand June. Mm. It should. It should just all be June. <laughs> Extra long Pride Month. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That or they should have added. Uh, I mean, should have added them at the end. But as you can see, our little evil Santa Clauses are all geared up and ready to ruin somebody's day. The one in the mask in the front? Yeah, no. He's hilarious. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I was um, like, that one's particularly jacked, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that Santa Claus will punch you in the face. Well, it probably looks like he has to do most of his work by himself, right? Whereas the, the one with the, the cigar clearly has henchmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. Henchels are words sad. The guy in the middle is a whole robot. Giving me Seth vibes right now. The one in the uh, the one in the tank is actually ninety five percent robot, five percent Santa Claus head. <laughs> oh no! Oh, so see, I thought it was like, I thought it was like a vehicle he was in as opposed to a, a part of him. No, that's a Futurama Santa Claus head in a jar. You know, all of that art is done oh. by our dear friend Daniel. Or, yes, Daniel. Or Stan with an exclamation point. And uh, you'll find him online at Stanex, S T A N N E X. We'll drop a link. Great illustrator. And he will haunt our live streams on Mondays and Thursdays with some of the best art um, that, I mean, it's just that kind of talent. Uh, we were able to connect and purchased some of his art for uh, I think this was for last year, right, Alex? Yeah, this was our December last year Patreon uh, benefit with our three evil Santa Clauses. That's right. Now, I'm trying to remember their name. Like, the one on the right is is Christopher something Kringle. Uh, uh, it's Chris the Claw, Saint Nick. That's it. Yeah. I'm right. That's right. And then the one on the left is the Lord of Misrule, right? Mm-hmm. And the one in the middle is uh, Santa Bot Three. Claus Bot Twelve Thousand. There we go. See, you know all this stuff. Hey, folks. I'm the I'm the disembodied voice, uh, and I'll be behind the scenes today. But um, I am uh, I'm stoked to see this, Alex. You've been. I, I can't believe that you pull all this stuff together. I mean, I do believe it because I see it, and it's always so much fun. And we've got great guests who are from our Patreon, which is at patreon.com slash mutants and masterminds. These are patrons, these are folks who have been uh, a part of that community for, gosh, I think, wow, I'm trying to think if we're, for the both of you and then additional friends. You also uh, invited some friends who are from, uh, that hang out over on your mutants and masterminds stream. Um, yes, a couple nope, of the uh, right. Untold Stories Project folks who are wonderful members of our community of superheroes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one thing I love about me and Masterminds is that, you know, if you play, you're a part of the community. And we'll, so, you know, we're just all a big extended super fam, all wearing our, our Lycra. All, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no capes, of course. But, um, you know, before I uh, go on and continue, how about I drop this modesty shield and let you all take it away? I'm here for it. All right. Also, breakaway capes. Nice. Edna Mode killed those heroes. I don't care if she blames the capes. Velcro exists. Yes, we're for blood. Choices right, were made. I'm, I'm hovering behind the scenes. It's as simple as snap tape. Mm -hmm. Basketball Break players and burlesque performers can use it. Superheroes can too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us for our special this month's uh, Mutants and Masterminds actual play from the Patreon. A uh, little adventure I'm calling Slay Ride. S-L-A-Y Ride. Because I love a good pun name. 
Uh, thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero, or your monthly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex, and I will be your humble game master this evening. Uh, tonight, we are playing Mutants and Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG, which is produced by Green Ronin Publishing. It is a D20 system that focuses on exciting superhero action. Uh, there's a character creation system in this game that offers unlimited customization options to create your superhero. And one of my favorite game mechanics ever is found in Eminem, which is the use of hero points. As a currency, the players have that changes the fate of the story. Uh, these points can be used for rerolls, player scene editing, and even modifying or improving a character's powers in a pinch. Uh, hero points are earned by leaning into genre tropes, acting heroically, good role-playing, jokes I think are funny, jokes I think aren't funny, and suffering setbacks just like superheroes and other media. I usually give away one at the beginning of every scene as well, so don't feel like you have to stockpile them. There's no prize for having the most at the end. Um, at least not yet. I'm thinking about making a, a lack of participation trophy for people who have the most hero points at convention games, but we're working on that. Um... And Troy, whenever you get a chance, I think we could probably cut the uh, cut the procedurally generated music. Um, thank you. We do have uh, Troy will be our producer tonight. He is working behind the scenes to make sure everything looks and sounds great, and I appreciate him very very much as our disembodied enforcer of goodwill and content. Um, we have gathered some festive heroes tonight. Say happy holidays, heroes! Happy holidays, Happy holidays, holidays heroes. heroes. Uh, I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing, and have them answer my question of the day, which is, what is your favorite winter holiday song? Uh, and I will start. I'm not in my usual space. So I'll start with Calvin over there. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, I didn't have time to think of an answer, so I will just introduce myself by saying, hey, I'm Calvin. Um, I'm here uh, filling up some space, as well as intending to play the Bowman tonight. Uh, still debating on whether I'll do the voice that I was doing over the last year plus that I was playing the character on the USB streams. But uh, of course, yeah, usually I'm over there on the Untold Stories project um, in the Nether Ward, Star Haven, and Fallout, and whatever else. Basically, everywhere on there. You cannot get rid of me. Uh, question of the day Favorite holiday song? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's always that Carol of the Bells cover, the orchestral one, but, um, mm. you know, <laughs> I, I have a terrible answer. It's the menu music from Arkham Origins, because it starts <laughs> off with a Batman theme, and then it goes into, like every good Christmas song, it goes into Carol of the Bells. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to go That's the with Bat that. Carol of the Bells. Exactly. That's what makes it the best. <laughs> And I don't know who to pass it to, so. Whoever you want. Um, Joe, I guess. Oh. Hi, that's me. I'm Joe. Jojo, whatever. Uh, again, I'm also over at USP, but on Tuesday, wait, yeah, Tuesday nights. Uh, I normally play a lady that likes to punch people a lot. Um, but today I'm here to have fun with a completely different character. And so I'm excited. Um, uh, favorite Christmas song. I don't know why. Well, no, I do know why, but it's it's uh, anyway. Santa Baby. I really enjoy Santa Baby. Um, I have like some really fond memories of it from when I was younger and performing at a, a, a conservatory. And it's one of my favorite like poppy ballet numbers I've ever done was Santa Baby. <laughs> So yeah, that's probably why. Uh, awesome. And Joe, who are you playing today? Oh, I'm sorry. I am playing Siren today. I'm super excited about this lady because holy crud, is she just amazing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to pull out the magic. Uh, I'm going to pass it down to Sean. Hi, so I I'm Sean. Uh, one of the Seans in the Eminem Mondays Uh uh, that's often there. Uh, Longtime patron. Um, looking forward to today's game. I am playing uh, Thunderbolt, second generation hero, uh, with the unfortunateness uh, of being trapped in his consignment suit for his and everybody else's well being. Now, as for a favorite Christmas song, I love the White Christmas movie. And out of that, my favorite song is this the song that's called Snow. 
in which it's there. And that just sort of sets uh, me off for the for the tone is that and I watch it every Christmas Eve, uh, pretty much without fail. And uh, usually I'm hopeful that there's actually snow on the ground at that time. <laughs> I guess deadless. Eric. Hey. Uh, hi, I'm RC. I'll be playing the immortal inventor Daedalus. And uh, outside of uh, outside of the stream today, I've been doing a Mutants and Masterminds podcast uh, called Masks and Mayhem for the past uh, three and a half years. Um, and I've been part of the Patreon community for, I think, coming up on two years, I want to say. I'm sorry, my son is very interested in coming up here to say hi. <laughs> no, he's not. He's interested in messing with me. But RC, what's your uh, answer to the question of the day? What's your favorite? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the classic Jingle Bells. Um, it's it's the one I that's one that first came to mind the second you said it. And I do <laughs> find myself, especially around the holidays, because I I worked retail for the longest time. I found myself singing it to myself. Mm -hmm. When the Christmas carols start in October. Yeah. Yeah. I was a Target employee for four years. That was my purgatory. It was great. <laughs> um, but my answer to the question, I've been listening to one Christmas carol on repeat all week while I've been working on this adventure, which is All Alone on Christmas from Home Alone 2. But it's a cover of the song that's performed by, I need to get this right because they're, they're this wonderful Ukrainian metal band that does covers of all kinds of different songs. And this metal of this song is just ah, chef's kiss. And their name is Sershin and Zaritskaya. They're amazing. That was intensely Eastern European. Wow. Yeah. Um, I also like uh, Oh Holy Night, the Josh Groban version. Of the um, but yeah, I think without further ado, we are good to go ahead and get started. So, Freedom League, all of you have just successfully thwarted an evil plan by Tom Cypress and Medea somewhere on the, the coast of Greece this summertime. Um, I would like you all to tell me what exactly happened, what scheme was afoot, what you all did to stop it, and uh, I will start with Bowman because he is right over next to me. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> I was trying to remember what Tom Cypress's deal was. I know Medea. Uh, Tom Cypress is kind of like Solomon Grundy. Oh, bet. Okay. He's a swamp the zombie. You really put me in a bind here. Um, I don't know. What could they have been up to together? I assume, obviously, Medea was the person in control of this plan. I don't know if it's just something outright destructive or if some guy said something that pissed her off so she brought tom cypress back to fight every dude on the beach or if it was some i mean that feels super petty but i feel like that's also a bit in her wheelhouse mm -hmm. um but it was probably something that was a bigger deal than that i imagine someone she attempted to have cypress attack may have caused some further issue or there was something nearby that she shouldn't have been messing with Like a very cute puppy off screen. <laughs> Look, he's doing his best. <laughs> best? <laughs> Are you okay? You're all right, aren't you? Um, Dados, how about you? What um, what sort of super heroic shenanigans did you get into trying to stop Medea's evil scheme? Gotcha. I think between like some intense punching, uh, there was definitely a lot of opportunities where we had to had to save the populace from falling buildings or. Uh, you know, just the rampage of Tom Cypress. Um, I was say, I think uh, I was say, I'm imagining a situation where I had to like rock it up and maybe keep a building from collapsing. Excellent. And Thunderbolt. Uh, well, you know, basically just to keeping uh, Tom Cypress distracted and. And uh, his occupied was one of the big, big things in order to do, you know, the, the standard tricks of blasting holes for him to fall into, to try and keep him there, bury him, you know, 
alive, though he's not technically, <laughs> I think, alive, but, you know, just to, and to keep him off balance there. Well, I figured the other guys would take care of uh, Medea. Mm. Yeah, mostly dead, still partially alive. And Siren. Uh, seeing as we are on a beach, I'm uh, going to say that she is there to protect the um, sea life and environment around there, but also the, she can have sneak attacks from the water and uh, help ensnare Medea to keep her under control. So it reigns her in toward the feet. Excellent. <clears throat> Cool. And yeah, through your powers combined, you were able to stop this evil scheme from happening. And now you found yourself on a beautiful summer day in Crete with not a whole lot to do except enjoy the summer sun and the time together with your friends. And you have spent the better part of this morning sunning out on a beach. Well, okay. some people have. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is a fun. I, that is a fun point. What has Thunderbolt been doing while everybody else has been having a good time on the beach? Uh, well, you know, I, I think maybe uh, just te go, go. take in some of the sights at least. Um, you know, eh, don't get to tra I get to travel as much, but usually I'm having to be the bad guys. Don't get a chance to take in the sights. Excellent. I think for Daedalus, uh, he's. I imagine he's been back to Greece a few times just from, you know, super heroics over the centuries, but it's probably been a while. You know, it's probably not his favorite place to return to. Um, so just kind of, uh, you know, contemplating staring out into the ocean a bit. Are you said? Are you in your armor sitting on a towel or are you sitting just like. Oh no! I imagine like yeah, he get, he gets out of the armor. That just seems mm. like getting getting sand in in between just sounds awful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, just staring mournfully, brooding out to the ocean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. I could see that panel in my head. Bowman. Uh, I imagine Bowman is going to try to take advantage of this moment to relax. Uh, but with the whole secret identity thing, I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of picturing him trying to find some shade somewhere so he doesn't get, like, tan lines from his mask. <laughs> uh, but he will allow himself a rare moment of relaxation, especially after having just stopped a supervillain a few moments ago. Find yourself a nice little tree to sit underneath in the shade. Yeah. Excellent. And Siren. Oh, she is absolutely soaking up the sun. She is, this is completely different than uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, where like it's bayous and the different kind of water in the Gulf and all that. She is soaking up this crystal blue water and sun and the different kinds of animals here on the beach. And she's just like, she's frolicking with her new friends because <laughs> she will never meet the same turtle twice. Or the same fish twice. Mm. Yeah, no, she's having a ball. There's one real chipper turtle that's been oh, following yeah. you around. Oh, yeah. Make sure like, you Did you see? I saw all that stuff you were doing with those supervillains. That was crazy. <laughs> we don't get the news down here. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to make sure it all stays safe and clean. Well, I'm going to do my best. Excellent. Does the turtle have a name? Fred. Fred. Fred the Sea Turtle. Fred the Sea Turtle. <laughs> awesome. Um, Daedalus, you'd probably be the first person to notice this, but as you're sort of sitting on the towel, brooding out into the ocean, you feel a snowflake fall on your forehead. And then a couple more start to come down from the sky, slowly and steadily. As a dark row of clouds begins to sweep over into the shoreline. And it's presumably July here, too, right? <laughs> yes, it is July here, too. Um, I think I kind of... Uh, who, who am I closest to? I say uh, on the beach. Probably Siren. 
I, I think I just kind of like gesture upward. <laughs> and Siren, yeah, more snowflakes are starting to come down. It's starting to flurry a little bit here on the beach. Oh, no, 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 no. This, mm-mm, mm-mm. And everyone, I want you to give me a perception check. Oh, enjoy. <clears throat> Oh no. <laughs> I got way uh, too reliant on the Oh, no worries. Um type Well, that's One. not cool. John's got a real character sheet. <laughs> it's okay. One B twenty yeah. slash roll. Thank you. Good. One B twenty plus perception. I just imported it. Like I have, I own Euro Lab, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be yeah. easy enough. I rolled a total of twenty-five. Excellent. Uh, Twenty-eight for the Bowman. Cool. So Thunderbolt and Siren, you're both a little distracted from the falling snow. Uh, Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. partially because you don't really feel or notice it, other than seeing it. Uh, and I'm just thinking. Uh, I thought it was Australia that uh was having snow now mm. man i should have studied better in school <laughs> <laughs> excellent um but bowman and daedalus as you're looking out you can see in this bank of dark clouds and fog that's rolling in off of the ocean uh there is one one large pinprick of red light and two small pinpricks of red light and you can feel this distinct stomping on the ground coming this direction as a wave of additional snow and ice is starting to permeate the beach can i make out any sort of figure within the mist well as you're sort of focusing and zooming in a little bit more you do see uh the sort of large metallic anthropomorphized reindeer stomping this way oh um, with this large open vent on the front of its metal face that is spewing smoke and fire. Um, and it is flanked by a couple, uh, by a group of these weird sort of gnarled, uh, bat winged humanoids covered with icy blue skin riding on a pair of blue ice, uh, flows. I am calmly, but very, uh, quickly getting in my suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, I will move us over to a map. As um, this figure stomps into view, finally becoming visible for everyone. And if you all want to arrange yourself where you are hanging out on the beach. I have a friend. Yeah, I have a friend token for you. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> Protect the turtle. Oh, yeah. This is oh, now going to be a problem. I need to add on the sheet complication, Fred. <laughs> As uh, this figure finally comes into view, um, it's about 30 feet tall, made of some kind of industrial wrought iron. Uh, with glowing red eyes and a glowing red fiery nose. Um, it looks down at all of you and bellows out this mechanical reindeer bellow as the icy humanoids uh, take flight around it to come down and attack you. So I want everybody to roll for initiative, please. And click on your token first, if you don't mind. Unless you don't have a Unless you don't have a character sheet, which I'll import that during break for everybody, just to be on the safe side. Yeah, mine seems to be all set up now. Oh, good. Which, uh, which do I add to for my initiative? Um, it should say on the character sheet. Oh, nope, sheet. I see it right as I asked. I am. Oh, my. Hmm. Okay. I don't believe it added my initiative Oof. value. I don't think it did. No, I put it on the sheet, but I don't think it went in. Hmm. Um, it should be plus eight, though. So you have a nine. To, you rolled a natural one. Sure did. 
Well, I thought I'd get it out of the way. Oh, good. Good choice, Bowman. <laughs> yeah, I got a total of five for me. <laughs> I know, I know, son. It's fine. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> okay. yeah, you're rolling right. now, and then you don't roll one later. <laughs> Siren got a seven. Is that right? Yeah. This is gonna go great. We're gonna have a great yeah. time, everybody. I don't think. Sp no, none of the heroes got above out. a ten. <laughs> we were all set to relax. We were in relax mode, not hero mode. That's where we made yep. our mistake. Awesome. Well, uh, the reindeer goes first, and he will stomp forward, and he'll look down at Thunderbolt and Daedalus on the beach, and his red nose will glow bright red, and f a charged laser beam is going to shoot out uh, at both of you. I need dodge saves from Daedalus and Thunderbolt. Uh, I need a DC 20 dodge save and then a, either a DC 25 or a DC 20 toughness save. Okay. Uh... Oof. Oh, Data, let's roll dodge first. Oh, I, I did. Didn't I? Oh, uh, oh, you did. You did. Yeah, you got a 15. I got a 15. Okay. I see. I see. Um, so that is a bruise in a daze for Daedalus. And then Thunderbolt, I need a toughness save versus 25. Okay. That doesn't look right. Okay. Uh, well, let me roll. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's not possible for you. No, that would be a 15. Yeah, it's a lot of fire. You have a toughness of 12? Mm hmm Okay. Um, go ahead and modify that on the sheet. Um, sometimes toughness is a weird bug on the new m, &M sheet. So it's one thing we're aware of that we're working on. But sometimes when you import the sheet, it doesn't put toughness in correctly. Uh, but that's a 15 versus a DC 25. That is a bruise in a daze. Okay. As this thing stomps down on the beach with its heavy mechanical hooves, and it powers up, and the laser beam just shoots out. Uh, Daedalus, you barely get into your armor, and you catch a pretty decent chunk of this heat burning down on both of you. Uh, and it slams its chest with its other, with its human hand, and roars into the sky. After that is the the little flying dudes here who are going to swarm out as a group to attack Siren and to attack Bowman. Uh, Bowman first. They're going to attack as a team, so two of them are going to try to aid while they while the main one tries to ice stab you. Alright. Uh, one of them will fail to aid, one of them will succeed to aid. Uh, so that'll be a plus two damage for this one if it hits. But I rolled an 11, so that's not going to hit. As they come in, uh, their hands sort of grow these icicle claws that they come down and try to swipe and slash at you. Yeah. But Bowman's able to dodge out of the way. And Siren. Uh, two of them will succeed on aiding, so that'll be a plus two or a plus three damage because the one got a natural 20. Or, sorry, plus five damage. Uh, but they only got a 10 to hit Siren, so that's probably not going to hit. As they come swarming in. Uh, Fred freaks out and starts screaming. <laughs> run, Fred, run! <laughs> I'm a turtle. <laughs> run, Fred, swim! Uh, over to you, Siren. Um, okay, I need to do a dodge save. Uh, no. no, you're good. I just No, I am good. Uh, oh, man. Yep. Okay. Uh... Oh, but it's my turn to do something. Oh, it is your turn to do something. Yeah. Um, uh, shoot. Um, blinding spray. Oh, no. At at this uh, is blinding spray a, a area effect or a single target? 
Uh, let me double check. I think it's... Does it have a bonus to hit next to it? No. Oh, that's right. I sent you the PDF, not the Hero Lab file. Sorry, one second. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, Blinding Spray is a, is a single target, and you get a plus 10 to hit with it. And it's resisted by Fortitude, so that's like you spray water in their eyes and try to blind them. Okay, I'm going to spray this one to my right... Um, so that is 1d20 plus 10. Whoa. And a 17 will hit. Oh, sweet. And it's a DC fortitude, 20 fortitude check. Uh, it is a minion, so it will suffer the worst degree. I rolled an 18. Uh, what is the worst degree of your blinding spray? On a third degree is unaware. So you've completely blinded it. It's sort of, you. what happens as you blind this creature? Uh, I'm just, it's like a whole bunch of messy sea foam has come up and attached itself right at the eyes and it's having a hard time getting it off and the salt is stinging and it stumbles backwards uh, a little it's bit. Screeching and screaming yeah. and clawing at its face. And um, she's gonna... I can barely see. I think that's how far I can move. Ooh. She's going to run off towards her the, the other heroes. Excellent. Uh, Fred is going to look sort of forlorningly at you as you run away. Oh, no, no. Swim, Fred, swim. <laughs> go to the ocean. Go to freedom. I have to go this way. <laughs> and he will give you a sad, despondent look. and he will. I will find you later. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Daedalus. All right. Uh, let me just take a quick look here. Um, yeah, I... So this... Oh, wait. So this the the reindeer is, uh, is humanoid, right? So I can't really get underneath it like you would a regular uh, I mean, it's a 30-foot tall humanoid, so you could stand between its two legs if you want. Not as not as effective as I was uh, looking for initially. Um, hmm. You know what? I will. I'm just going to go for initial and see how I do here with a uh, uh, gravitic blast. Uh, for that, where are they? That can't be right. Oh, does it have improved critical on it? Sometimes that messes with it. Oh, okay. Because it says I got zero, and I don't think. <laughs> yeah, you physically can't roll a zero. <clears throat> Let me check the sheet real quick. Okay. I'll say otherwise I can just grab some dice real quick. Um Why did you do that thing? Mm, well it worked when I rolled it. Go ahead and try clicking on it again, see if it works that time. Am I clicking the wrong button? Perhaps. Let me... Is it one of the green buttons at the t in the attack section? Ah, that was the problem. Um, okay. <laughs> I was doing the one under the power section. Uh, so oh, when gotcha, I did gotcha. attacks, I got a total of... Is that 21 or 20? Uh, that's 21 to hit. And you were doing the damaging ones, right? So it's the DC 24. Right. Okay. Yes. Excellent. So that is a good solid hit on this monstrosity. So let me... However, it rolls a 33 on its toughness check as you fire off oh. this beam into it. What happens, Daedalus? Um, yeah, I imagine that the, like, the beam goes in, and I'm like, cool, solid hit, and I just watch as, as its body absorbs it and, and dissipates it. Um, and I imagine, looks I imagine that this thing looks unfriendly towards me. <laughs> yes. It looms over you with its big... Uh big reindeer face. Uh, do you want to move too, Davis? Are you happy hanging out there in fireball ah, formation? Yes. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to go get closer to Bowman, actually. I'm going to see if I can lend some support there. If need. Oh, wait, no, wait. I'm dazed. Oh, I'm not going to stay standing here. Oh, you are dazed. You are dazed. That's right. Never mind. Your daze drops off at the end of the round. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, Thunderbolt. Well, uh, if I, I'm dazed as well, I believe. Or am yes. I staggered? Just dazed, dazed, just dazed. Okay. But it means I still get one action. So I, I basically, uh, seeing as it looks like a big giant robot, time to do a blackout of all the electronics there, I think is the uh, easiest that's thing a, to do. That's a bold play, Cotton. Yeah. Uh, do a uh, burst area nullification uh, straight in front of me. Since Daedalus is behind me, shouldn't affect him. Uh, or any electronics on Bowman, and I know Siren doesn't do the electronic modern job. Yep, no. Excellent. Um, will you click on it for me so I can see what the DC is? Sure. Or tell me what the DC is. 17. 17, okay. Uh, so he fails his initial dodge save, so he will take the full 17 effect. Um, is, what's it resisted by? Uh, uh, resistance. Uh, oh, it's a nullifier. Counters electro right? uh, electronics. DC seven, 17, burst area 30 feet, radius spear, DC 17, broad simultaneous. Doesn't say anything else. Uh, that's because it's a nullify effect. So, yep. um, that's an opposed powers check, basically. So you'll roll a d20 plus seven for your nullify rank, and I'll roll a d20 plus um, his tech rank for the electronic stuff, uh, which is really only one thing, but it's a good thing inside his body. So go ahead and roll a d20 plus seven for me. Let's do a D20 plus 7, 25. Uh, Ruby got a 29 because roll 20 is liking my dice rolls for some reason. <laughs> roll 20 favors the GM. So, um, Thunderbolt, what happens as you unleash this blackout and then it doesn't seem to have any sort of effect on the giant mechani mechanized Rudolph? Um, do you just see there's a uh, air fills with this crackle uh, 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 spear is sort of emanating out of me as I go forward, goes and encompasses this giant thing, and it just nothing. Yeah, it does give you a dissatisfied look, similar to the one it gave Data was. <laughs> well, that's, I... that's just mine. <laughs> Excellent. Bowman, I forgot to add your initiative modifier to your one. What is your initiative modifier? <laughs> Oh, it's a uh, plus eight. Okay, so you should have had a, you should have gone as the first hero, but I'll let you go first. I'll let you go now at the end of the round, and then in your right spot next time. Yeah, either way works. Um, yeah, I'm gonna groove out of here. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> shoot a swing arrow and get myself sixty feet that away. Yeah, this seems good. This is this patch here is just like. Like ice or something, right? Or yeah, it's just ice. It's not like a rock. It's not like a boulder or anything. Okay. So yeah, gonna swing arrow out of there, then whip around, and for my standard action, shoot an explosive arrow at these guys. I am gonna give you a hero point when you land. Can you give me an acrobatics check when you hit the ice? Oh sure, I can embarrass myself. Um, acrobatics of oh plus ten. Have to not roll terribly. 19? Nice. Uh, 19 will be enough. So you sort of hit the ice and you skid a little bit, um, but you're otherwise able to still turn around and fire. Sweet. All right. Explosive arrow. Um, I don't think it's on the sheet, but it is... Where is that? Uh, area damage 6. So DC 16 to dodge. Excellent. And who are you shooting with it? Uh, the group that was surrounding me. Um... It's radius of 30, so let me... Actually, can I get everybody? Actually, I don't know if I can get both groups without getting Siren as well. Or perhaps... Nope. Perhaps... <laughs> nah, I don't think it's possible. 
Yeah, I don't think it's possible for me to get both groups without hitting one of the heroes as well. Okay, so just the group that was attacking you? Yeah, uh, I'm going to trust Siren to protect Fred, the new team Excellent. mascot. <laughs> Excellent. Well, the map fits. They're looking for a 16 on their dodge. Uh, yeah, two of them will succeed. One of them will fail. The one that fails needs a 21 toughness. Yep. Um, the two that succeeded need a need an 18 toughness save. So you take out one of them with the explosive arrow. What happens? So Bowman, he shoots like the swing arrow up and then just using the natural bounciness of this tree, he uses that to like yank himself up and away from this group. Then he will land on the ice, um, spin himself around as he's sliding. And then he'll say, oh, what's something cool? Uh, he'll say, this will warm you up. And he'll shoot an explosive arrow in the middle of this group. The Mephits, uh they explode, and one of them shatters into this crystalline ice formation when it goes down. Uh, the other two look at you still angry. Not as effective as I wanted. Hmm. Rudy! Rudy's going to step on Siren. No! I do not want to. Actually, that might hit everybody. Let me see. Everybody in contact with the ground, anyway. Uh, yeah, that will get everybody that's in contact with the ground. So I need a dodge save from everybody first. Ah, uh, I'm using a hero point because screw that. <laughs> okay, Bowman. <laughs> Bimbley over there on the ice. Fortunately, none of the heroes see Bowman's just like in the middle of slipping, which keeps him. <laughs> see, he's falling one way and the shockwave's going the other way, so it bounced out. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a 20 on the dodge save, and then if you succeed on that 20 dodge save, I need a DC 15 fortitude save. If you failed on this dodge save, I need a DC 20 fortitude save. There we go. So it looks like uh, Bowman and Siren succeed on the first dodge save. Uh, Daedalus and uh, Thunderbolt fail. So I need a fortitude for 15 for Bowman and Siren and a fortitude for 20 for Thunderbolt and Daedalus. I got so I failed by three. I don't immune to fortitude saves. Oh, good. Never mind then. <laughs> Perks to being a automaton. <laughs> Um, if you, yes, DT fifteen forty-two. I got twenty-six. Cool, cool, cool. So, Daedalus, you're just not having a good time. Um, Daedalus, you will be dazed and vulnerable until you resist that fortitude effect. As he stomps down, and his the hoof strike shakes the earth around underneath all of you. Uh, Daedalus, you're the only one caught off guard by it. However, Rudy will go fatigued to try to capitalize on that. And he'll take a move action to come over here and try to squish Daedalus while he's down. I really hope I built this armor well. I believe in you. Does an 18 hit your vulnerable parry, DC? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I need a DC 27 toughness save. What what would uh, what, what would vulnerable do again? Is it a uh, negative five? Uh, negative it cuts five? your uh, parry in half. Okay, so yeah, definitely hits. Um, and so, what am I making now? A toughness check. Uh, DC twenty seven toughness, please. Hey, <laughs> there you go. So the arms, get the armor twenty nine. Yeah, so he comes over, um, looks at you in this sort of down state that you're in. Lifts up his hand, lift up, lifts up his hoof, and stomps down on you, leaving you in a crater, but unharmed because of that wonderful armor you built. Oh, thank the gods. Excellent, 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 excellent. Uh, the methods that got blown up are going to come over here and try to blow up uh, Bowman. One eighteen failed to aid. 
But the other one did get a hit with a DC 21 toughness save, Omen. Um, I don't want to say, but it is a crit. Nah, a minions can't crit non-minions. Oh, right, okay. Thank goodness. Toughness. <laughs> Sweet Christmas. Oh, 23. Uh, Squire, so far our heroes have been hanging out on the beach after a successful mission, and a giant Mecha Rudolph came over with some ice methods to ruin their summer vacation. That's what you've missed so far. Uh, but a 23 toughness save for Bowman means you're A-OK. -okay. As they both come in, uh, you're able to... What happens as you're avoiding this damage? Uh, kind of just using the bow as a staff to, like, block their slashing attacks. Just getting it in the way of their arms. Excellent. Uh, these two, who are not blind, are going to fly over here sort of around Siren, and they're going to throw down some ice balls. This one, who is blind, is going to sort of wander around looking for some way to heart somebody that doesn't involve his eyeballs. Uh, one will successfully aid on Siren, and then mm -hmm. a 17 to hit Siren's dodge, DC? Uh, I have a dodge of 10. So you're good. Yeah. I would need a 20 to hit you, so. Yeah. Uh, the one chucks down the ice ball, the other one uh, is unable to successfully follow through with that, so. Excellent. So... My favorite terrain is aquatic. I need to be in the water to get that advantage, right? Correct. Okay. And the bonus for being in the water is either a plus two to hit or a plus two to your defenses. Uh, you get to choose at the beginning of each of your turns. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. Bowman. Okay. Um, I think I should probably do much the same thing, but I'm running out of beach to swing to. I don't want to be cornered still, so pretty much the same thing. Uh, I will get this tree down here. I will get away from those guys. Um, I'll only go this far, about to the edge of the beach there, and then shoot another explosive arrow, try to take out these two. Excellent. So DC 16 to dodge. They will both succeed on the dodge save, so they need an 18 toughness. They will both succeed on the toughness because they're grenade proof, I guess. <laughs> this is super not working. <laughs> uh, but luckily, nobody else seems to notice, Bowman. What happens? <laughs> uh, so, you'll fire the swing arrow again, swing from the tree. He'll land on the sand this time, so he doesn't have to worry about slipping. Mm -hmm. And he'll try to think of another cool thing to say, like, time to feel the heat. And then again, the arrow is ineffective on these two. So he's just kind of like looking at the bow, looking over his shoulder at his quiver, just wondering if he didn't tune these correctly today. <laughs> oh no, I used all my powerful arrows in the last fight. That's the problem. These are all the backup mm. ones. Excellent. Uh, after Bowman is Siren. Okay. Uh, had a plan, and then it got in the way. Oh, um... no, go for it. <laughs> Um, oh, oh no, oh, wrong arrow. <laughs> okay, she's gonna run right to the edge of the water. There we go. Um, and can I, so the ice flow thing that they landed on, that's water. Can she manipulate that too, or just the same yeah. stuff? Oh, well, yeah, that's water. So I'm gonna that's take water. that <laughs> chunk of ice and attempt to drown them with it. Um, because it, oh, and that Dope. was my other question. There's cumulative affliction ten on drown and the blinding spray. What yes. does that mean? So cumulative uh, means that every every time they fail a saving throw, uh, they're guaranteed to get a worse condition. So if they fail by one, uh, if they fail by one twice, it counts as failing it by two degrees. If they fail by two degrees and one degree, it counts as three degrees. Um, so if they take the first degree, they're fatigued. If they take the first degree again, they'd move to exhausted. If they take the first degree a third time, they'd move to incapacitated. Awesome. 
And that yeah. drown is also a plus ten to hit. And it's a single target. So whoever you want to, whoever you want to drown. The one with the red dot next to him. He's also closer. Excellent. Um. Flame. That's oh. a thirteen. <laughs> So you um you break off a chunk of ice. What happens as you chuck it over there and you miss? I think it's she's not quite used to ice. She's from New Orleans, and she's like, "It's water still. That's a lot heavier." Breaks. Ugh. Fine. Just and the method first. lets out this noise that's like laughter mixed with breaking glass. Oh, that was disturbing. Um, and the next round, since you're in the water, you'll be able to add uh, your favorite environment bonus. Daedalus. So, so what am I again? I am dazed and hindered? Uh, dazed and vulnerable. Dazed and vulnerable. Great. <laughs> um... But at the end of your turn, you'll get a fortitude check to try to shake that off. Yeah. Can I still can I still use extra effort? Yes. In, yep. in my current, okay. I didn't know if that's if Dazed uh, impeded that at all. Yep. Um, it's just then, instead of getting three actions, you only get two for the price of your hero point. Right. Right. Okay. See, I don't want to be anywhere near this thing's stomping ability right now. The armor helped me once, but you know who knows how many stomps I can take. Um, yeah, Rudolph's got excellent groundwork, just so everybody knows. My first instinct was to try to grab his foot and trip him, but he's giant, and I just feel like it might not go my way. But I'm also immortal, so I think I would take some chances at, you know, if at first you don't succeed, I'll get another chance later. Yeah, and he's you're really strong <laughs> in your Maybe arm. years it might be years later, but um yeah, I'm gonna go for, for a trip. Excellent. Um go ahead and roll to hit. Just unarmed? Yes, yep. And then it's minus two, right? So, uh, As long as you don't have improved trip. Oh, I thought it was... Oh, shoot. What is it otherwise? Minus five? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't have improved trip, it's minus two. Oh, oh, okay. I don't believe... No, I do not have improved trip. So. Okay. So, 26 then. Uh, 26 will hit. Okay. And if the attack succeeds, make an opposed check of your acrobatics or athletics against your opponent's acrobatics or athletics. Use whichever has the better bonus in each case. Okay. 22. 22 is a pretty good roll. A pretty good total. Yeah. 19. You succeed. And All right. You... So, yeah. Um, you're not imagine... prone in a square adjacent to you. Sweet. Yeah, I imagine I'm just like getting underneath his foot, like, and just using all of the strength of the suit to just like yank him up into the air. He arcs a little bit and slams down. Awesome. Sand and snow goes everywhere as he crashes down. Uh, very okay. confused as to what just happened. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think I am going to. Uh, I'm going to use extra effort to move and jet away. Um, and then I'm going to use my hero point to negate the, uh, the effect. Excellent. Excellent. And you are staying in the air or you are jetting over and landing somewhere. I imagine I'm jetting over and landing somewhere just so I can kind of take a more defensive position. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Like right over there near, uh, near siren. Good move. Um, and then if you want to spend your hero point, there's a little hero point circle above your name. Ah. Uh, if you drag that out to the table, it gives me the supreme privilege of deleting them. Thunderbolt, over to you. Okay. I am going to just sort of fly straight up and then just aim a thunderbolt straight at uh, our uh, reindeer friend here. Okay. 
And that doesn't have a bonus attached to it for some reason. Uh, what is your bonus? I think it's it's probably plus eight because I think I balanced them for PL. Thunderbolt, uh, twelve damage. Uh, yes, uh, plus eight. Okay, so you have a twenty to hit instead of a twelve, which will hit. And that's a DC twenty-seven for the lightning bolt. Again, I got a nineteen on the dice for a toughness of thirty-three for the robot. <laughs> what? What happens, Thunderbolt? Uh, as I arc down, it uh, just seems that this thing is shielded. It's much tougher than it looks like it should be. <sighs> Very discouraged. Do you want to move or do any extra effort or anything like that? Um, yeah, I uh, would... Uh... like to try to uh, just position myself straight over for if I have to uh, over him then to, to go through for a second uh, attack at some point straight away on my next turn. Excellent. So I like dead <laughs> top of him. Excellent. And he's bellowing and looking up at you and making this just horrible Rudolph reindeer noise. I'm sure also now I'm right in his line of sight. I'd taunt if I could. <laughs> well, you are. And he uh, he's going to try to laser beam you from the ground. So go ahead and give me a dodge save, Thunderbolt. You're looking for a DC 20. You got a 20. Great. Uh, and then I need a toughness save for a DC 20 since you rolled a 20 on your dodge save. Uh, I'm just going to spin my hero point and try to re-roll re re that. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right, finally. <laughs> Excellent. So you're fine. The laser beam slams up into you, uh, passes over your containment field, but it doesn't cause any lasting damage. Uh, and that's Rudy's turn. The ice methods, these ones are going to keep harassing Bowman. Uh, one of them, I think, gets a hit with a 25. Oh, you're on mute, Kevin. Yes, sorry, that'll hit. Oh, no worries. I need a toughness save for a 21. Toughness of... Mm. Not so tough. Oh! Ooh. Getting some decent rolls here. There you go, Bowman, with a 26. <laughs> As uh, they swoop down, and you're able to just get out of the way of the claws before they tear flesh. Uh, these two are going to swarm down. One's going to attack Daedalus, one's going to attack Siren. This one's effectively out of the fight because he can't see and he's not allowed to make a resistance check for it until a minute has passed. So, for Daedalus, stay up. A 20 to hit your dodge, or parry DZ? Yeah, that's going to hit. Oh, um, I need and a DC 21 uh... toughness. That's a bruise. As a bruise. The ice method looks over the giant robot that stomped on you and laughs as it does actual damage. <laughs> and Siren, a 21, which I ah. will, will hit. I need a DC 21 toughness save. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, hang on. Freak out on me again. Ah! You're good. That's 21. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> See? So as they both come down, they rake their icy claws on you. Um, Siren, you're able to just get out of the way using your water manipulation to push the icy claws away from you. Uh, Daedalus, you cop it. But also, Daedalus, I need a fortitude save from you at the end of your round. 
Okay. To get rid of your day slash vulnerable. So if you go ahead and give me that real quick. Oh, now? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. 26. You shake it off. You're not dazed or vulnerable anymore. Oh, well, I can remove those from my conditions. Then. Excellent. Is there a way to mark on the character sheet uh, for bruises? Yeah, uh, underneath the defenses, there's a button that says hit. If you put ah. your hits in there, it will subtract automatically. Okay, I think I'm at two now. Is that correct? Yes, yep. Okay. Uh, Bowman, please give me a perception check at the beginning of your turn. Okay, perception of that. So. I feel groovy. Uh, 13. Uh, 13? I'm saving nothing. my points for attacks, so... Okay. Then nothing to worry about. I am fairly distracted. Um, sure. I can use power attack when using multi-attack, right? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, I don't have the advantage for it, but I think it'll work out fine. I'm going to multi-attack on the two guys surrounding me. I'm going okay. to apply power attack as well, so the attack should be minus four. And the damage should be up by two. I'm using my peerless shot. Yes. Yep. So plus twelve to hit on these two dudes. I believe in you. Uh, I do too. <laughs> Thirty-one for the one on the left. I think that's a crit for your peerless shot too. I think you've got improved critical on that. Uh, yes, I rolled a nineteen. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I be- my belief was well founded. And then for the other one, well on the right. A 26. Uh, that'll hit both of them. So the one gets your DC plus two uh, the, plus five, and the other one gets your DC plus two. So the damage is normally four, so plus two would be six, plus five, 11. DC 26, no big deal. You got this. Uh, that's a dead method. And then what's the DC for the other one? Your regular mm-hmm. DC plus two is 21? Yes. You got both of them, Bowman. <laughs> what happens? So Bowman, with the explosives having been thoroughly ineffective so far, he is going to... <laughs> the Bo believers have been blessed, <laughs> indeed. Uh, he's going to switch. He's going to go back to basics. He is simply going to... Actually, you know what would be super cool? He takes out an arrow, he spins to shoot it at one, and he fires, and it makes contact. And then before the thing falls, he like yanks the arrow out, whips around, and shoots it again at the other. Excellent. Which probably wouldn't work because it would dent the arrow, but it looks cool. So it It's looks... comic book magic. It's fine. Um, and they do explode into glass and ice shatter- shards as they as they are defeated. Do you want to move, Bowman? Um, no, everything is in range for me, so. Excellent. Oh, can I stealth? And your bow's Actually... going dent. <laughs> They're made um, of unobtainium. <laughs> True. Unobtainium. Yeah, you can give me a stealth check if you want, Bowman. Okay. <laughs> Gonna hide him in the snow here. Uh, stealth is plus 12. 24. You know, Bowman, you forgot your Arctic Bowman suit at home. Right? <laughs> uh, but you, you you drop prone. Is that how you're hiding? <laughs> Basically. Oh. There's not much else I can do. <laughs> You I got hide in plain sight. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Siren, over to you. Can I do an expertise magic check on these guys? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And you do get to decide if you want the plus two to defense or plus two to attack at the beginning of this round. Oh, uh, attack. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so I got a sixteen on that check. Uh, sort of examining them, you. You, you've heard of these kind of creatures before. They're sort of chaotic elementals that could be summoned from various planes of elemental chaos. Uh, ice methods are known for being particularly cruel and capricious. Uh, they like to come down and really cause harm during blizzards and other situations. They can draw the warmth out of people's bodies to fuel themselves. Uh, they are also weak to fire. Okay. Shoot. Bowman, you got any fire, flamey, arrow stuff? And Daedalus, you too. Fire, fire. Literally and figuratively, fire. 
Um, and she's going to uh, at, uh, use a water weapon now. Um, strength base damage five. How do I do this one? Yeah, so um, that'll be a d20 plus 10 for your weapon, and then the damage is 10, so dc 25. And, well, 12, because I get the plus 2 for the water? Correct, yep. Cool. 27. <laughs> 27 will hit, and it's dc 25. That will shatter the method in front of you. What happens? Yeah. Uh, so she's gonna bend down, scoop up, uh, it seems like she's just, like, scooping up water, but suddenly, like, it all forms into this, uh, gentle curved blade, and, and one spell swoop, she just comes up and across the chest and bifurcates the body diagonally, and it just shatters in a rain of similar things as before. I'm gonna give you a hero point for the use of the word bifurcate. I will happily accept that hero point. <laughs> awesome. Uh, do you want to take a move action, or are you happy hanging out there? Uh, I will roll up over here, staying in the water, but still having line of sight on both these mofos. Excellent. Daedalus. Um, I was trying to make out the fire thing, because I have a... It's, it's, Gravitric or gravitatic blasters. So I'm thinking, like, I was trying to think about anything I could do, like extra effort to like overload the circuits to make them use fire <laughs> descriptors. But that um, sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, sure. Um, you've also got rocket boots, so like, I mean, yeah, I guess I have something that has fire already. But I think I had to use the rocket boot up close. <laughs> I don't want to get. I don't want to get close to this thing. It already hurt me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you just jump on its face and melt it into the ground. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, with the two hits I've already taken, I do want to take care of the guy who's next to me. Uh, so I think mm. I'm just going to start by just like... Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to do like a, just basically a haymaker on him since I'm right next to him. Yeah, just awesome. Using the, the, the force of the suit. And... Armed... 24 to hit. That'll hit. And you smash him as he gets a 15 on his toughness save. Uh, what happens, Uh Yeah, I think I just come across, get him in the face, and he follows along with my fist as I bring my fist down to the ground, and he just, like, smashes apart. Beautiful, beautiful. Do you want to move, or are you happy hanging out there? Uh, I think I'm going to hold position. Okay. Awesome. Thunderbolt. Um, just for your information, Thunderbolt, him being prone does mean you get a plus five to hit in melee attacks if that sways your decision making in any, in any sort of way. Uh, yeah, let me see here. That is my melee. Okay. Um. Unarmed. Okay. I am just going to uh, come barreling down on their flight and just, you know, try to pummel them since nothing else has been working on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Drop like a rock, basically, from the sky. Excellent. Let's do it unarmed. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, and that gets a plus five to that, so 30. Yeah, no, sorry. Um, the 30. 20, 22. That's a power attack, right? Yeah. Yes, then that will hit. So DC 30 punch. You cause the first bruise. You start denting the armor. What happens? Thunderbolt. Uh, as you just see, it just fall from the sky, 
trying to emulate probably like number of wrestlers that I've just seen before, you know, do that Superman style punch straight into his dead center. <laughs> nice. Excellent. And there's a big dent that sheds in, uh, shunts into its chest, uh, spewing smoke and sparks out. And uh, I will move back up into this guy after. Excellent. Uh, the robot needs to make a will save. It fails by one degree. And um, Thunderbolt, as you fly back up, all of you notice that this sort of swirling smoke begins to cover the... Um, all, not smoke, this fog starts to cover the reindeer's eyes and it seems like it's having more difficulty seeing uh, it will take this time it'll take a move action to stand up and as it's standing up it's going to try and gore thunderbolt with his antlers but he gets a minus two to this roll because he can't see uh 23 to hit thunderbolt's parry dc I uh, got an eight. Uh, I would like a toughness save, please. Mm -hmm. For a 29. Oh, Thunderbolt, you're A-OK. -okay. Um, mm -hmm. You notice as the antlers are coming up, they are they do seem to shine with deadly sharpness, but you're able to avoid you're having, you're having your suit punctured too much by them. And then the reindeer gets another will save versus the affliction it's suffering from. Uh, the s fog seems to clear from its eyes. Bowman, give me another perception check. Okay. Might actually use my point on this one. Unless I roll something great. 26. 26. When the uh, fog clears from the, from the reindeer's eyes, you think you hear a voice over here say, cheese and crackers. Uh, sorry, I didn't see where you pinged. Over here in these oh. trees. Hmm. Interesting. Um, not gonna say anything just yet. Well, actually, it is my turn, so I'm gonna turn around and I'm just gonna shoot a bola arrow over there. Awesome. Uh, I'll see if it works. <laughs> Roll to <a> hit. <laughs> Uh, ba, 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 ba. Bola arrow is. Is that. Do I have to roll to hit that? Or I think they have to roll to save. I think you have to roll to hit and then they roll a save. I don't think it's an area of effect. Okay. But on the uh, Hero Lab sheets, it, the PDFs, it doesn't show afflictions bonuses to hits. Yeah. Um, what's the rank on it? It's rank 8? Yes. Okay, so you have a plus 12 to hit with it. Twenty-three will hit who you're aiming at over here, so they'll roll a little dodge save. Okay. Uh, yeah, they will suffer the second degree. That would be immobile and defenseless. Cool, cool, cool. So hearing um, the voice, but I'm, oh, sorry. <laughs> um. So yeah, you shoot your boa arrow over. And your instincts sort of aim over there before you see it, but you do see there is an elf over there in sort of a long tan trench coat wearing a fedora uh, with a cigar in his mouth, and he is seems to be holding his hand towards the reindeer, uh, conjuring smoke and other strange magic out of his hand. So um, I'm assuming we have comms. <laughs> yes, yes. So Bone will say over comms. Yeah, we have some sort of gangster elf situation sorry Bowman can you repeat that <laughs> uh, a, a gangster elf with both the hat and the coat and the uh, the, the whole elf thing well I'm, I'm you know I'm sure we have bigger problems at the moment yes <laughs> yes we do <laughs> um, I'm just curious is this something that Daedalus may be familiar with 
Give me an expertise history check. Or mythology. Been a while he's seen some things. 18. Uh, him wearing a trench coat and a fedora is strange to you, but you do know that you, are, you have met several of Santa's elves in your time as a hero. Um, you you think it sounds like something that could be associated with this big crazy ranger that's stomping around, but you'd have to go and talk to them to see if you have any further thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, Bowman, do you want to do a um? Do you want to do a move in action or anything? No, I'm gonna real quick extra effort shoot a peerless shot at the reindeer, see if I can help out with that, Excellent. or it'll ping off. Uh, I'm gonna power attack. Perfect. Also, good. hello, JM. Thank you for spending some time with us tonight. I'm glad you're having fun with Eminem. One, two, three. The 17 for a 31. Oh, yeah. And that's multi attack against a single target, right? Yes. Well, you get plus five damage for your multi attack against a single target with how high you rolled. Uh, the peerless is normally. Four, but I powered attack, so four plus two plus five is eleven, so twenty-six. All right, he's got one bruise. No, twenty-seven. <laughs> All by uh, what happens? Uh, so after tying up this guy, Bowen will turn and he'll start attempting to take a shot at the reindeer and at what he thought would be a joint or an unarmored part or something, but it is hmm. surprisingly tough. Excellent. Um, the elf will yell out to you, Bowman. What's the matter with you? You got candy canes in your brains or something? Let me out of here. <laughs> you just hold on a moment. Take some time to cool off. Ah, oh, good. The guy with the bow and arrows got jokes. Siren. I think you're on mute, Joe. I'm sorry, there was loud stuff happening. Anyways, yeah. I'm going to attempt to drown the reindeer thing. I'm taking a bonus to damage again. Um, bonus to hit. Bonus to hit, sorry, yes. That's okay. So then, But you can trade that for damage if you want to use power attack. Yes. Wait. Okay. What, you what have is... the power attack advantage? Do I? That is <laughs> not used to the sheet. Oh my gosh. No worries. No, worries. no I do not have that. Okay. So what you can do is you can use it as a maneuver. So you can take up to minus two from your to hit to add up to two damage. No, no, no. no. I feel like I need everything I can to hit right now. So, mm. yeah. Uh, so plus 12 total. Yikes. Um, wait, no, that's... Yeah, that's a 26. Yeah, that's okay. Never mind. No yikes necessary. Yeah. I read uh, it as 14, and I was like, oh no. And it's a DC 20 fortitude save? Oh, I did drown. Yes. Excellent. Um, here we go. Unfortunately, it gets a 24 on that fortitude safe. So what happens as you're trying to drown this big robot? Um, she uses all of her force and energy and shoves like this little tsunami type wave up onto the beach. And it, the reindeer is just a little too far away. And so it just kind of comes up to its knees and recedes back. Mm. Excellent. Um... Do you want to take a move action too, Siren, or are you happy where you are? Uh, I think I'm happy where I'm at. Okay. Uh, Daedalus, over to you. Um, so I think I am going to, you know, when Bowman talks about this, you know, elf, I'm going to rocket my way across and over to to, to that area um, and then turn around and take another shot at this uh, big, this big uh, uh, reindeer. Excellent. Um. And I'm just gonna be using my uh, my blasters. I'm not gonna try to uh, bind it or anything. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one to hit. That will hit. 
for a DC 25 toughness save. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gets a 28 because this is made out of un- uh, unobtainium, I guess. <laughs> uh, what happens, Daedalus, as you're firing off? Uh, yeah, these two concussive blasts just uh, go out and hit this thing. Um, but a, much like the uh, initial one, it just seems to absorb it without any issue. Hmm. Frustrating me to no end. And uh, the elf behind you, Daedalus, will say, you got to get in there and take the pilot out. I'm sorry, are you helping us with this thing? I've been trying to help this whole time, but your uh, your buddy over there who thinks he's legless or whatever has got, uh, got other plans, I guess. Um, I'm going to get on the comms and say, Thunderbolt, try to get inside, the, uh, get inside, get the pilot out. It's in the mouth. It's in the mouth. You best you not be lying me. to me, elf. Oh, yeah. You best be hearing the truth, human. All right. Well, when you say it like that, I realize how what I said sounds mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you should be aware of the way your words and the impact they have on folks. Maybe I don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's my that's my turn then. Excellent, uh, Thunderbolt. Okay. Um, now, seeing can I see that's uh, okay? There's a pilot. And go through its mouth. Is there anything in its mouth that I sort of could get an entrance way or anything that I can discern? Um, do you have technology or engineering or electronics or anything like that as an expertise? Uh, no, but I do have technology. Give me a technology check. Uh, with a 15, as you're sort of looking at it, you didn't notice this before, but it does look like the mouth is almost like the boarding ramp for a spaceship. You think you could get down in there and yank it apart, uh, yank the mouth open and get in there. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, saying, you know, Rudolph, I'm beginning to think that uh, the reason the other reindeer wouldn't play with you is because maybe you were the ass. <laughs> <laughs> the robot sort of looks at you and gives you a hero point. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Davis, I'm going to give you a hero point for your... Uh... I guess that was hurtful what I said. Comment. <laughs> oh, I think I forgot to give you my hero point for when I extra efforted before. Unacceptable. Give me both of them. No. <laughs> um, so Thunderbolt, go ahead and uh, swoop down there and see if you can try to yank that open. This will basically be a smash action. Okay. Which it will be an unarmed attack check and then a... Um, damage versus the uh, ramp's durability. Okay. That's with your plus 8, though, for a 16, which is enough to hit. Uh, So then it's DC 25 for that. The damage of the ramp. That's, That's a break. Um, so you're able, Thunderbolt, uh, tell me what happens as you wrench the mouth open and you look inside and see the little elf with the bomber jacket and the goggles uh, sitting in the chair looking back at you, terrified. You gotta be kidding me. I'm just looking at as I just, you know, I've wrenched it open and it's laying slack, of this this so-called boarding ramp, and I'm looking at the elf. Seriously? I suggest you give up as I just point like a, a finger as if it's going to go off. <laughs> uh, the little elf pilot will raise his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, man. Just don't, don't tase me. And that will take us out of combat. I think I help, given that he was uh, not lying to us, I think I help untie the, the gangster elf. Ah, look at that. Man is. I give back the uh, the bullets to to Bowman. <laughs> Start very carefully wrapping them back up in the arrowhead. Uh, the little elf in the jacket will stand up and dust himself off. 
and uh, he'll walk over to the robot and spit on its hoof. So, does anyone know what this is about? I'll tell you what this is about. This is about the end of the world. Oh. That again. <laughs> oh, that again. I right. Tough guy. I'll take the elf in the bomber jacket out of it and take him down to the ground and go, so, what's your story? Uh, he begins speaking, and it is in some kind of strange robotic language you don't recognize. And uh, the other elf will look down and shake his head and say, this is one of those... Uh, well, I guess we should probably have a little conversation as a group, huh? That would give yes, everybody a hero point for surviving the scene. <laughs> um, he, uh, the elf looks up at you and he says, My name's Jingle Halloway. I'm an uh, enforcer on the, on the naughty nice list for old St. Nick. And uh, we got big trouble brewing up in the North Pole. <laughs> Would my knowledge of Santa Claus and elves, like, would I be aware that he has enforcers, or? Um, give me another expertise history check. I was about to ask the same thing, but from, like, the magical end of things. Yeah, give me an expertise magic check. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nat 20. Nice. Wow. Siren is intimately familiar with Santa Claus's operation. <laughs> but uh, Daedalus and Siren, you both know um, that starting around the 1960s and 70s, Santa did start employing some elves to help him with the disciplinary side of the naughty, naughty list. Um, elves like Jingle are typically responsible for giving coal to bad kids or reporting on the severity of bad things the children are doing. They're the ones who check the list the first time, so St. Nick can check it twice. And what was his last name again? Halloway. <laughs> Jingle Halloway. Oh, Mr. Halloway, <laughs> can you tell us more about what's going on here, please? Well, this may surprise you, but this isn't my normal time of being out here in the world of you, uh, delinquents but somebody has stormed the north pole and they're uh they've taken santa's workshop hostage there's three of them three evil santa clauses and i assume this is one of your like things one of that like multiverse stuff that you kids are into these days fascinating an incursion on our timeline interesting from Santa Claus's. Yeah, it's a real, uh, it's a real trip. They took over the whole joint, and I got, uh, well, I got exiled for speaking up against the three of them. And they locked the North Pole down. They made it inaccessible to anybody. Given the methods they use here today, I think you're lucky to have been exiled and not uh, executed. No, they sent these guys down here to kill yous. Oh. Is that to do with the end of the world you mentioned before? That's to do with you guys not stopping the end of the world. Hmm. Go yeah, on. You, you all being superheroes, you're sort of at the very tippy top of the nice list for some reason. I don't know. I don't think it's 100% warranted, but... The jolly guy's got a soft spot in his jollies for you. As Bowman puts his bowl arrow away. <laughs> I mean, it might be the whole saving the world and multiverse a few times mm. gave us a few extra check marks in the nice list. Yeah. So, what what do you mean by end of the world? These three evil Santa Clauses, they're uh. They're harnessing the pageant, the power of the workshop. They're starting to put together. Well, they're looking for, they're looking for what makes the magic work up there. They're looking for the heart of Christmas. 
the meaning of the spirit, the holidays, all that good stuff. There's a, uh, well, the power that gives St. Nicholas his power. There's this particular item, this totem, something or another up there that he that he's hidden away underneath the workshop that gives him all the ability to give all the presents every night or want everyone a present in a night and doing all that fun Christmas magic stuff. All that goodwill, all that stuff. There's this... I don't know what it looks like. All right. Only the big guy knows about that. But the big guy was taken. Who knows where. But he's still alive. To the best of your knowledge. I've still got my power, so I assume he's still alive. All right. So do we attempt to attack the North Pole? Take it back? That's what I was hoping you guys was going to do, but I think it might be a foolhardy uh, mission if we don't do something to start de depleting their influence on everybody. Do you I got a plan. A... You have a plan. I got I got a proposition. It's kind of like a plan. Really, I got a goal, I guess, more than a plan. If we could spread enough good cheer before we head up to the North Pole, there's the possibility that these evil bastards are going to be uh, less powerful. Okay. But I'm not exactly the uh, I'm not exactly the spread cheer type. I'm more of the kneecap bad kids type. So I think we all understood that vibe. You know good. your assignment and. It's fine. Uh, how should we go about spreading good cheer when we're kind of in the opposite time of Christmas? It's time to put on the biggest caroling show the world's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> what, I you know only got my Christmas? name is Siren, but I am not a singer. If you want there's to there's no here, place that has Christmas down here? Outside of December? Mm. No. I mean, no. American corporations like to do Christmas in July. That's a money grab. Well, let's take some of that money and grab some cheer. God, I'm so sorry. I realized what I just said. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Uh also, hi, Chav Hunter and Nate Robbins. Yeah, there's a bunch of evil Santa Clauses out here. I mean... Let's go find one of these corporations. What are you talking like? Are you talking like a toy shop? Are you talking like a candy shop? What other kind of shops you got down here? Maple syrup shop? All of those do exist. Um, I think I mean, if you came down here and stayed down increase. here... You would find many kneecaps that need, um, and you'd never be able to go back up north. So let's let's not go down that list just yet. Perhaps the most straightforward method. I could just take a lot of my money and stream it about large large cities. That will bring cheer, certainly. That's not cheer. That's greed. So, Talking goodwill towards man. So what, we just need to convince some people to do some good deeds or something? Do we need that, to, do we need to scare bad to bosses into treating their employees right? You guys are the geniuses. You figure it out. And if you need me to kneecap somebody, he sort of like pulls his trench coat aside and pulls out this candy cane striped bat and slams it into his hand. Hey, so was that the reason Jeff, you know, this guy I went to uh, school with uh, after Christmas one year, he was kind of walking a little funny? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember Jeff Kokowski. <laughs> was the second naughtiest kid I ever straightened out. Hey, he was a lot nicer after that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm glad you recognize the, the quality of my work. Ray, I appreciate that. So, and you know what? I'll talk to the big guy, and I'll definitely get you that body you're looking for for Christmas. 
<laughs> That's a binding contract right there. <laughs> oh, especially if they shake on it. I don't shake nothing. Oh. So how how um, how yeah. many people need to be included in this act of good cheer, approximately? As many as possible. Whatever you all can come up with. Would a rock concert do the trick? It could, if you know, if if you all want to put on a show. <laughs> I didn't say it had to be us. I meant like again, <laughs> we could get we could get someone to put on a show. I mean, we could make good use of this thirty foot tall reindeer. Brandon says, "Are you nicer? Do you need to see my Illuminati?" <laughs> Wow! Oh, man. Wow! 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 Um, Perhaps we could uh, we could recruit the Gravy Squatch for <laughs> for assistance. No one celebrates that holiday <laughs> in our time of need. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, with our powers, we could do like a simulate like a, almost a fireworks uh, type of demo, you know, with lightning and pyrotech. Other pyrotechnics from it, uh, maybe some sirens, do some water uh, effects in there. We'll probably call up little... some some whales and sharks and dolphins and other sea life to. And I can use my technology to broadcast it across the world. Yeah, yeah. Tap into the satellites and do the technology thing. Yeah. That across the red wires and blue wires. To me. Sounds Green like wires. <laughs> Kiss Rock Sea World. Yeah, that, that is what we just described. <laughs> <laughs> Troy gets a zero point. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so yeah, whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to open it into a skill challenge for you all to spread good will amongst men. So I imagine we'll have to persuade some two musicians and and some uh, dolphins and things it sounds like yeah i'm gonna use command sea life for the sea uh the marine aspect of everything awesome fred will come back up on the beach and be like do you need yes. me to get some friends yes. <laughs> yes fred i do anyone that would love to give a performance that will be seen around the world and we will save santa claus if you know who that is I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> what is a performance? When, oh, have you ever seen dolphins like swim around and be silly and they all jump around in the water? And I hate a those lot guys. Okay, they, they, they can be a little nosy and pushy and, but you see them having fun. Well, they're giving you a performance because you're watching them have a lot of fun. And so we can get all the other animals and sea life together and you can splash about and swim and jump in the out in and out of the water and all of this fun stuff and the rest of the world will watch you have a fun time. Okay. Do I need to make a persuasion check on that? Yeah. Oh, no. He says, what's a Santa Claus? Okay. <clears throat> uh, Santa Claus is this magical person. Like, I'm, I'm magical. That's why we can talk. He's a different magical person that likes to bring gifts to everyone. That How come you don't ever bring gifts to everyone? Uh, my gifts are different, but Santa has magic to bring the perfect gift to everyone that has been good during the year. Um. He hasn't started including good animals yet, but I'm going to have a very stern talk with him about it. But if you help uh, have fun so everyone can watch, it'll be really, really hard for him to say no to bringing you all presents from now on. And what is good? Hmm. You know what? <laughs> everyone up here on land debates that an awful lot. It 
might need to be a longer conversation, but as long as you treat everyone nice and you're happy at the end of the day, that's good. So the opposite of a dolphin. You know, if you had said that about an orca, I see where you're coming from. Mm. But not all dolphins. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> wow. I said it and I immediately regretted it, but my brain couldn't stop. I am sorry, stream. You heard it here. Not all dolphins. <laughs> all dolphins are bastards. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I need to be kicked off the stream for that one. I fully expect, accept the no. consequences of my actions. No. Oh, awesome. Man. Wow. Okay. Uh, what, what's your persuasion check? I've gotten. <laughs> uh, I've lost the thread. <laughs> um. Uh. I need to do a one d twenty plus eight. That's a fourteen. Uh, that is a success for the skill challenge. Fred sort of looks at you. He says, I'll go find some people who are good. Yay. Thank you, Fred. He'll shuffle into the ocean and go find some animals <laughs> for the show. Uh, what's everybody else doing while Siren is having this philosophical conversation with the sea turtle? Clearly we need to get Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> That's That'll true. She gets discussion. to she gets to come out of the closet for Christmas music. <laughs> oh my god! Who has the best connections to get Mariah Carey? I figured it would either be Daedalus or Bowman. Daedalus definitely has the money to bring her yeah. uh, out. <laughs> I mean, so does Bowman. Do we just, I guess, do I know that though? I guess is the real question. Yeah, yeah. Daedal Daedalus would know that about Bowman. Yeah, I, I assume the Freedom League knows his secret identity. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I mean, I was going to suggest technology to get the reindeer running for the show, but I think I think Tatalus can take that better than I can. <laughs> so does Bowman want to call his celebrity friends? Oh my god. It Yes. <laughs> it's too funny not to. <laughs> Do you have the connected advantage? You know what? I don't. Oh, oh wait, I do. Hmm. Cool. Give me a persuasion check. Bowman, who are you calling? I mean, I don't know. Does Mariah Carey exist in Earth Prime? Yes. You can call Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé. <gasps> <laughs> they are universal constants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only during Christmas time, though. That's such a breaking case of emergency. So Bowman will... I mean, there's no other people here on this beach, so... Uh, Bowman will... I, mean, I guess he'll take off his mask, take out his... Uh, no, he wouldn't have carry his phone with him, but he'll use his communicator to make a phone call. And call... He'll call, call the Bow computer to have the Bow computer call? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bow computer, link me to the celebrities. Um, and he will reach out to uh, Fletcher Beaumont's celeb friends. Hmm. Cool. And I do have connected, so yeah, persuasion. Oh, my persuasion is super high. I might need to, <laughs> might need to hear a point for this one. Okay. Nice! Yes! Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, the conversation goes with Mariah Carey. Bowman got a natural 20 to summon Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wow. It's so cool. And it's like, hey, yeah, no, no, it's Fletcher. Hey, yeah, Flash? yeah, from the, yeah. From the newspaper, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so weird weird thing um are you busy in the next hour or so um 
that's a little short notice. Oh, yeah, I'm What's just having this uh, sudden uh, surprise charity event, um, and I thought your voice would be great for it. It's a it's a Christmas in July kind of thing, and I know I don't want to know you know typecast you or anything like that, but uh, I thought who better to get than the Queen of Christmas herself? Well, Fletch, you are still amazing at flattery. Where do you need me to be in an hour? Uh, literally Greece. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what? We'll uh I'll <laughs> I'm in uh, LA. What do you mean <laughs> get to Greece in an hour? Okay, maybe a bit more time than that, but uh not too much more time. Hey, is I Michael there with you? Uh Michael B, the boobs, you know the guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God, we, we get you know we get I mean. put in the we get put in the same closet when it's not Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I mean, presumably we can just have them broadcast from Los Angeles, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? I don't know why I thought I would bring them here when we have the power of technology. Uh, mm. Okay, different idea. <laughs> Thanks, Daedalus. <laughs> Di different idea. <laughs> You're with Daedalus? No. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. That was that was someone I was watching TV. Oh, okay. Well, technically, I go. You know, we do have the teleporters for the the with the oh, lighthouse and everything. Can we use remember. the teleporters? For that? <laughs> what if we got a I mean, if we really want to involve Ru portal. Rudolph, we could teleport the Rudolph to to Los Angeles. <laughs> Christmas in LA. <laughs> Bowman, why don't you reach out to the the what are what what are they called on the the West Coast? The ones that like fought that giant vampire, the Stormer Storm. Um, what those Stormbreakers? Guys? Stormbreakers, yeah. Because isn't there a kid on that team that does the portal hopping? You've met him. Right? Does he exist in this timeline? Sure. <laughs> Oh my god, Jonesy says Mariah, only dolphins can hear you, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect combination of powers. Um, <laughs> so in a very roundabout way, I guess we'll move the whole thing to LA and cool, cool, cool. Fletch will call people and try to get a live stream concert set up. Get Michael Buble in there. Get them both in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we'll figure out how to get the reindeer there. <laughs> And it is three degrees of success. So you get like you get Mariah Carey, you get Michael Bublé, Josh Groban shows up <gasps> because he's mad God. about the boobs. Star studded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's calling in all his favors, and then like several minutes later, he's done. He puts the mask back on, and he's like, "Well, that was exhausting." <laughs> Good work, Bowman. <laughs> he turns off the Bruce Wayne, comes back to brooding vigilante. <laughs> It's like a light switch. <laughs> hmm. Daedalus, what would you like to do? Well, I got all of my brooding out earlier in the day. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm working on uh, learning more about how this reindeer works and seeing if there's anything we can you know, potentially use it for, both in our good cheer and perhaps whatever comes next. Cool. Give me a technology check. I can't oh, believe wow. Bowman got a natural 20 for summoning celebrities. 26. 26. Awesome. That is, uh, that's four degrees of success for the skill challenge. As you're sort of poking through the uh, wreck of this, um, it's not even really a wreck because Thunderbolt just destroyed the cockpit, but the rest of it is still in pretty good shape. Um, you start going, you start going through the systems and you notice that this particular war machine is definitely very well put together and seemingly a connection uh, or a um, combination of technology and magical elements. Um, you do recognize through your, your extensive experience with magic, sort of the twisted Christmas magic that Santa Claus is usually associated with. Uh, you think this may be a big toy that has been armed and turned into a giant death machine. Um, you think you can get it up and running again, but you would need somebody to pilot it. Okay. Well, there's an idea. 
And it is an elf-sized cockpit, if that matters. Oh, man. Jonesy, that hurt. <laughs> oh, spicy. Come on. It's going to be uh, L.A. We can... Uh... Sure, we can find somebody with uh, vehicle operator experience. That's of enough short stature. What, what about maybe I mean, she's pointing at the little gangster jingle? Yeah, jingle. Holloway, like, you yes, are Steve. to have known what to do with that monstrosity. Um, can you operate it? Are you just asking me if you want me to get into this big death machine and get some revenge on the people who messed up with my Santa Claus? That is an accurate summation, yes. I'm getting in the thing getting some revenge on the people who messed up my Santa Claus. Well, we have to go do this performance first to spread the good cheer that you asked us to do. Right. And then revenge. And then revenge. <sighs> I was selected for the naughty enforcement list because I'm not exactly big on spreading good cheer, dancing and singing, but... If you can program this thing to dance and sing, I guess I'll help. Daedalus, can you do that? Daedalus, uh, you think you can do that with the technology check that you rolled? Yeah, I'm. I, I believe. I believe in myself enough to make that happen. And Jingle kind of looks up at you and nods and. Goes over to the other um, elf and takes off his uh, goggles and takes off his bomber jacket and puts the bomber jacket on over the trench coat he's wearing. Daedalus thinks to himself, you know, if it wasn't for all the super heroics, I think my ego would definitely probably push me off the good list. <laughs> Actually, you're grandfathered out of it because you're older than Santa Claus. Well, that's going to fester. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he um, he looks over at uh, at Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, what do you want to do to help with the, uh, the spreading good cheer challenge? Uh, well, let's see if I can. Uh... I don't know if it'd be use my athletics, which is higher, or my technology. Try to buff up some of, out of some of the dents that we've uh, put into the body of this robot uh, and get it hmm. back into shape. Awesome. We can do that. Uh, athletics or technology? Um, give me an athletics check. You're just basically pound. That was an at 20. <laughs> 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 this is to make up for the trouble you all had in the first fight. <laughs> awesome. So what happens, Thunderbolt, as you're as you're banging it through? Uh, I am just banging it, you know, put it out, pouring the elbow grease, a little super strength in the right places, popping the uh, the dents out, a uh, little maybe occasional just a little bit of electricity uh, to do some spot welding where necessary. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, perfect. So as you all start heading off to L.A. with your giant reindeer robot for the spreading Christmas cheer extravaganza, I think that's probably a good place for us to take our quick break since it's about 7.04. Um, Troy, if you're still there, if you could come and put the modesty shield up, we're going to get up and stretch our legs and grab a drink, grab a snack, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, everybody. It's very fun. Yes. I'll be right back.
We're coming back in just a second, everybody. Thank you for bearing with us while we took our quick break. I'm having a great time tonight. I hope everybody else is too. We have so many shenanigans. Christmas shenanigans, even. Um, cool. It looks like we are back. So thank you, everybody, for bearing with us while we ran off to take a break real quick. Um, thank you, Troy, for taking care of our technical stuff on the back end. I appreciate you, as always. And if you're just now tuning in, you have uh, you've caught us in the middle of trying to save Santa Claus from evil Santa Claus Zai. Evil Santa Claus Z's? I don't know. Um, Clausites. There we go. Um, and our heroes are in the middle of putting together a crazy Christmas in July bash to spread goodwill and good cheer to try and decrease the efficiency of some of these evil Santa Clauses before they go storm Santa's workshop at the North Pole. So that was a lot of fun words and sentences to say I love my job. Um, thank you, everybody. So we rejoin our heroes as they are making their way to L.A. for uh, for their big show. Um, how are you all traveling there? Um, I would suggest we use the teleporters in the lighthouse. Yeah. That's probably... Like that. <laughs> that's the that quickest. Sounds... Seems like the most logical move, given especially that we have to bring this giant uh, uh, ranger with us. Bowman is going to have to stealth off when we get there and then probably go into a secret identity for a bit to actually meet up with his celeb friends. <laughs> but yeah, I think the teleporters would work best. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, you all teleport. Are you taking any of Fred's friends with you? Or Simon, are you going to ask them to meet you there? I feel like it might take them too long. Um, to travel even like the fastest ocean currents. So, um, yeah, whoever Fred had collected, um, that was willing to travel to a brand new ocean, um, mm. yeah, we'll take them with and hopefully they can put the call out once they, they get to the new area that they can explore. Awesome. Uh, Fred does come back. He's got a number of fish with him and other turtles. Um, he has a bunch of puffer fish that look seemingly cross with you, Siren. Oh. Well. Hmm. Uh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> they look up at you and they're like, we hear you like dolphins. <laughs> And I do understand that they, you know, will boop you so they can have extra fun. It is not nice. I know you're, um, it's not a poison. Venom? Yeah, your venom mm -hmm. is, um, is in limited supply. But uh, I promise I will keep you guys safe and um, no booping allowed. My cousin I Carl got stuck boofed. Oh no. He got stuck I puffed am, by a dolphin. I am I am so sorry. That's not okay. It's never okay. That wasn't a good dolphin. No dolphins are good. <laughs> if you don't want to come, you do not have to. No one is forcing you to do this. Oh no, I'm not coming in some stinking I'm not gonna miss out and make it some stinking dolphin look bad. Okay. That's fine too. And the dolphin that's there is just like looking down away from everyone. No booping. So you, you have to <laughs> promise no booping. I will do my best. Booping okay. is my nature. <laughs> this is like the frog and the scorpion all over again. What do the rest of us see when, when this is... Uh, you see Siren standing on the shore talking to these fish that are like all all schooled up, uh, poking their heads above the water to say things every now and then and stopping to back down to breathe. That's us. They're coming up out of the water like... Me, me, me. 
Yes. <laughs> and I'm just speaking my language back, or am I like blah, 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 at them? Uh, you're. That's up to you. <laughs> I want to say like I'm speaking English mm. to them. Okay. <laughs> like more of a, a magic connection that mm -hmm. translates everything. Mm -hmm. Squire, I don't know what a sea giraffe is, but I'm curious. Oh no, is that going to be some kind of punny joke? I'm going to Google it real quick and see. Oh no. Uh, it's an efficient medium range radar. <laughs> ah. Sea giraffe <laughs> fish, here we go. In its natural habitat. <laughs> giraffe seahorse? There are giraffe seahorses. I don't know. Oh no, I'm about to get on a tangent. Like a seahorse with a giraffe neck. Okay. One that's barely passing high school. <laughs> hey, C's get degrees, man. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, they will all gather close together so that they can be in range of the teleporter to go up and then come back down into the water somewhere off the coast to go find more friends. And there's an octopus in the middle of all of the fish that looks up to you and is like, I'll make sure that they're they behave. The kids, you know, you know how the kids get. Yes. Thank you very much. And all of the animals will go poop and they'll come back down later. And you guys will go poop and come back down. Uh, where are you um, where are you all setting this event up? Um I don't know the names of places in L.A. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, no, it's definitely not L.A. I was, trying, I was going to say the Santa Monica Pier, but that's uh, that's, that's, that's close that. enough. Yeah, I mean... Mariah can drive a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so the Santa Monica Pier is where you guys want to set up. Are you guys building a stage, or are you... Um... I don't know what y'all think. Can we use the reindeer as the stage? It has, like, does it have hands or was it just all hooves? Uh, it's got two hooves and two hands. Yeah, use the hands maybe. So it can be like off the pier, so we don't have to build anything new, and then the animals can be around it. So put the reindeer's hands together to make the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So Jingle will walk out there. He'll put his hands up and he will wait for you. To, well, he'll put it down next to the pier and wait for you to start loading like musical instruments and other equipment onto the platform and celebrities. Um, the yeah, fish will go out and find some Pacific Ocean fish to join them in their little, their little enterprise. <laughs> and I forget, is Daedalus like a known public figure? Yes, yep. Now he is. He was Well, I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, both as a hero, but also as just like a regular person. Like, you know, mm -hmm. he's, when he's... Okay, okay. Yeah, people know that he's like an immortal mythic being. Okay, so it's not, you know, entirely uh, impossible that he could just show up at an event. Yeah, it's not impossible. Okay, okay. Fletch is changing into his civilian outfit. Is anybody else changing into civilian appearance? No, I feel like I'm gonna need help. Yeah, I feel like I need the suit to help move uh, stuff onto the hmm. onto the reindeer. Thunderbolt <laughs> civilian appearance is just his costume with a t-shirt on top of it. Uh, no, definitely staying in siren form because of hmm. the communication stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so Mariah, Josh, and Michael Bublé all show up. <laughs> okay. First this name is... basis, of course. This is the uh, first time that's ever happened in an m and adventure I was running. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Fletch will guide them towards the concert stage. Um, or however that 
works. I've never gotten celebrities to a place. Hmm. Uh, I also no, have no. never coordinated celebrities. I'm sure it's as easy as we're all imagining it. I mean, no. usually, right? They're probably be like, no. they're probably be like <laughs> assistants and things helping with that. But because yeah. this is like you know, comic book, movie, TV show logic, yeah, there's going to be, be very important people are doing it. Like a different entrance and exit that they use. Um, there's going to have to be a barricade to keep like the paparazzi and like rabid fans out, and so they'll probably arrive in whatever the heck cars, probably expensive crap, get escorted. Hmm. All their like personal brr, 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 party guards doing the thing. I'm sorry, I'm totally like describing this scene. For no, you. That, please do. I, yeah. uh, this is a group uh, storytelling event. I'm just here to. I'm just here to chuckle. Uh, so yeah, like so especially Mariah Carey, but uh, uh, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you have no idea with the event planning nonsense. Anyways, uh, so. <laughs> The celebrities show up, bodyguards do their thing, brr, brr, and yeah, so Fletcher will lead them safely behind barricades. Fans are screaming, ah! um, and uh, come around the corner of the pier where Daedalus, Thunderbolt, and Siren are all like trying to help and load in, and that's where we can greet them at like towards like middle end of the pier and like little ro little robot break. Right? Big robot yeah. has its hand stuck down at the end of the pier, and there's going to be like makeshift stairs so they can just safely ascend up and get onto this mobile platform. Yeah, and the three of them look up at this big steampunk robot reindeer, and they're like, "Is this supposed to be an Iron Maiden concert?" No, no, it's it's uh, Christmas in July. See, because it's a reindeer. When, when Christmas in July, you know, on, things are hot. It's a harder time of year. Yeah, mm. it's, it, it, will, it has red that glows, and it, it has its own special effects, and it needs the, the metal housing so everything doesn't just explode. But it's safe. Roll a persuasion check. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's to prevent it from exploding, you say? Minus plus eight. Okay, 23. They believe you. <laughs> That's fine. They look at it a little skeptical, but they'll all get up there and they'll start getting ready for the performance. Um, Fletch, some of the um, TV producers will come down and they'll start coordinating with you and asking when it's going to go live and if you want to open up and make a statement when it, before it all starts. Or if the Freedom League wants to make a statement since you've brought members of the Freedom League in for this as well. Yeah, I think the Freedom League is more famous than me. So it's probably a good idea. All right, Thunderbolt, take it away. What? Wait, wait, wait excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the camera crews will come in real close. People start filing in. Um, You've gotten a pretty decent uh, call, you know, turnout for such a quick ad hoc event because you guys got a million successes on the skill challenge. Um, and the cameras zoom in real close on Thunderbolt since that's what Dana said. Well, at least you don't have facial expressions. They can't tell you're panicking. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> I'm giving Thunderbolt a hero point. Um, the person next to the TV, next to the camera, is like, "Are you gonna say anything, man?" Uh, it says, "I, I ask some electricity," and just go, "Welcome." to the extravaganza of Christmas in summer, spreading some joy and, ha and happiness throughout the televised world. Take it away. <laughs> and then just motion over. <laughs> Excellent. Is there a bad guy? Can go fight. <laughs> <laughs> Just capitalism. Just capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, as Thunderbolt says, take it away. I'll pass it over to all of you to sort of narrate a little bit what the what the program looks like, um, and sort of what happens as part of this big extravaganza. And I will start with Bowman. Oh. Well, as the show begins, the hands lift upwards as the robot stands up straight, and the of course the performance begins. Mariah Carey does that one song that I'm not going to try to do. Mm. <laughs> But we'll start off with that. We'll, you know, flow into something with Buble. Um, you know, Josh Groban as well. And then they can finish off with something together, maybe. <laughs> I yeah. obviously have not coordinated a performance with celebrities as I either, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think Josh but, thinks that the, the reindeer is really cool. And he's, like, giving it his all. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he'll put the work in. <laughs> He's going real metal on Silent Night. <laughs> I actually want to see this now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a double bass drummer going in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the drummer for Josh Groban's band even has a double bass. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Data was what what uh what is Daedalus's contribution to the performance? My actual contribution to the performance, um, I imagine like basically flying around. Maybe like I I like took a handful of like uh, fireworks and I'm like throwing them and using my my gravity blasters to just like you know make them explode. Um, you know, just kind of putting on a bit of a show, or maybe even having like a bit of a like a sky writing going behind me. Hmm. Just as cheer. Nice. <laughs> oh my god. This next one is called Jingle Hurl, and I want to see a holly jolly pit. <laughs> Siren? You, you never know if the red is blood or the clothing. Hmm. It's all jingles. It's all bells. Uh, but Siren, what do what do your animal friends do? Ah, okay. Uh, so with uh, with the knowing the the set list beforehand, she listens to the tracks, and so she knows like the general wet, uh, ebb and flow of everything. And so at the right moment, she's gonna like toss up waves of water to splash around the giant reindeer and with that like the dolphins will go leaping out and splashing and like very uh reminiscent of like the little mermaid kiss the girl scene that you have the fishes coming up and bloop, bloop, and you know i'm suspecting there's lots of drones flying around to catch all the angles and what do singing puffer fish sound like probably some unholy screaming underwater and uh, but Above water, it's a little beep or something. It's Tibetan throat singing. A little, a little, a little bit like a, like if maybe on the side of like squeaky whoopee cushion. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's the vibe that the hmm. the drones are going to be flying around and catching like all the little details of the fish and like the big moments of like the whales and dolphins hopping about. And, the background dancers are the animals. Fred is having the best time. He's got a synchronized turtle yes. dance thing going on in the middle. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, Thunderbolt, what are you doing during the performance? Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to, to coordinate and with them going, okay, if there's any points in which they'd like, you know, they standardly have the pyrotechnics or fireworks, I will go off. I'll use, you know, just some lightning bolts uh, in there to substitute uh, for it for that little uh, uh, flash and bang, you know, when, when they're looking. Uh, we'd have that normally. Give a little pizzazz into the air. Yeah, and all of you can physically feel the cheer that you are spreading. Uh, even those of you who don't have magical senses, you can feel this sort of this warmth, this happiness emanating off of the crowd as they are excited about everything that is taking place. 
Um, they don't know why we're having a Christmas celebration in July, but they're very excited about it. And there is a lot of warmth and just good feelings emanating off of the crowd towards you uh, and seemingly up into the Rudolph uh, robot. And the, um, the glowing red nose uh, begins to whine, sort of like an Iron Man repulsor. And uh, it explodes with this big red flash of light that sort of punctuates everything that's happening in the performance. Not in a murder everybody sort of way, just in a big... <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was just a little bit worried. Like, did we just set off a bomb and not realize it? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> um, and after the show all winds down, the celebrities all disappear and the crowd begins to dissipate. You, um... Uh, Jingle will lower down the... Rudolph's head to look down at all of you and say, I think we got enough good cheer to at least take one of these guys out. Okay. Least, or make it harder for them to do anything bad when we get where we're going. All right. Are you Let's ready to go this. to the North Pole? I need to make sure my friends get sent home first. But yes. And I should probably have other clothes. This is for beach time, not polar time. Yeah, it's real cold when we're you going. You have your Arctic suit? <laughs> uh, it's in the wash. <laughs> but I do need to get changed. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, you guys will have a chance to change costumes, uh, get ready to go. And uh, Jingle will say, the uh, Rudolph statue here, it's got the ability to take us where we need to go. Oh. All right, then. Hey, Jingle, looks like you... <laughs> uh, Bowman was going to say, hey, Jingle, looks like you finally managed to spread some holiday cheer after all. I ain't that kind of elf. I mean, you were just now. All I've got is coal in my veins, and he smokes a little candy cane. Yeah, I get it. You're doing the cool guy thing. You can't spread cheer when your heart's three sizes too small. Yeah, tell that to... <laughs> I was going to pick on one of the celebrities. <laughs> tell that to <laughs> Michael Bublé. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> I like you, Bowman. <laughs> you got grit, kid. <laughs> Um, but you all get dressed up, and he'll go back into the Rudolph robot, and he'll put the hands down to hold uh, the heroes this time. <laughs> and uh, if you all get in, he will. the robot will sort of grab each of you in its fists, and you feel this vibrating uh, energy pulsing over you, and this weird... You can hear the jingle bells and you can smell the chestnuts roasting on the fire. And everything sort of dissipates into white light and you materialize uh, far in the frozen reaches of the earth. Uh, looking on the horizon, you can see this long candy cane striped pole and several dozen smoke spirals up into the sky. And what looks like a long barbed wire fence around the facility. That seems unnecessary. And where are the smoke spirals coming from? Uh, sort of all across uh, whatever location that is over there. Okay. Uh, Data, she would recognize them as being like forge fires for different smelting okay. shops and workshops and things like that. Well, Jingle, I take it this is the workshop or the workshop area. This is the whole uh, Santa's village. I see. They always like this, though. It's usually a lot prettier than this. All right. We're in unfriendly territory, folks. You want, you want me to carry you? You want to 
flying next to me. I, I think I'm definitely planning on flying, flying on my own. So am I. Um, He'll release the two of you. Should we make a stealthy approach here? I don't know if we can do that with the giant robot. So where likely are the big bats? Let's, let's go. They've been holed up in the workshop. Ruling over the rest of us with an iron fist. A three-way iron fist. But I... I don't think they're in 100% agreement about what should be done. They're either in the workshop or they're going to be in the candy cane mine. They're digging down trying to find the ornament that's going to give them the, all of old St. Nick's power. Hmm. So we could either split up or we could take them one at a time. And I'm pretty sure they're holding the real Santa Claus in the workshop itself. And if we make the wrong choice, it will alert them to our presence. Well, I suspect my big robot statue is going to alert them to our presence. Yeah, uh, probably the workshop is clearly where <laughs> the best place to go. Up. My guess. If they're there, plus we get the real Santa free. Now, the question is, do we want to go in stealthy or we want to go in noisy? Well, my vote's for stealthy. I said we put the star in the tree and we like this bitch. Yeah, that does sound like your choice. Um, I am not a stealthy individual. So um, maybe we should split up and the not stealthy people or sociopathic ones in the group um, can... I ain't a sociopath. I love what I do. <laughs> We can still cause a distraction to help the sneaky people get in, and maybe we can do a lot of damage, and they can do a lot of rescuing. That's a good idea. I also agree with Thunderbolt's assessment of freeing Santa. You know, other than a master mage, I can't think of a better magical ally to have. Is there a back door to the workshop? Yeah, there's a back door. And there's a skylight because we know what you folks is like. So... And there's a loading dock where all the presents get loaded up into the sleigh. That's another good place to sneak in. Not that I've ever tried to sneak anybody into the workshop after hours. But as oh. someone who does enforcement, you need to think like, you know, like someone who would break in. You know, that's uh, that's how you find the loopholes. Uh, the, the You know, what you gotta fill up. Yeah, that's right, Dados. I never snuck anybody in after hours for a little while. You need to stop saying that work. phrase because every time you say it, it just makes me think more and more. You've done that more than once. But I, could I, didn't, say, I didn't say that. Okay. So why don't we all position our uh, some of ourselves, uh, myself, Dedalus, Bowman, we take a different entrance, we sneak in, and Saren and the big robot, you know, when we say go, just knocks on the front door. I'm into it. I like it. Otherwise, I'm open for suggestions. That sounds like a plan to me. It works. Oh no, I got my stats mixed up. I do have some stealth, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine because I have almost none. Okay, it's fine. So who, I'm sorry, who's sneaking and who's beating down the door? Uh, I'm sneaking for sure. You're sneaking. Uh, what's, what's uh, skylight, back door, uh, loading dock. I will say um, back door. And I will work to cause a distraction. 
Oh, also, are my hits resolved at all, or, or am I yes, still... Yes, uh... yeah, all of the hits. Should, anybody who suffered a hit, you should be unhitted at this okay. point. Well, seeing as he mentioned the skylight, I'm probably going to go towards the skylight. <laughs> okay, I'll do the loading dock then. <clears throat> Excellent. Now i got to figure out where I'm going to put this big reindeer statue on the, uh, on the map. You didn't assume we would bring it after we finished our Christmas concert? <laughs> no, I, I didn't assume you would bring it to the Christmas concert. <laughs> How could you not have seen this coming? You know, everything we've done here has followed like a logical progression. <laughs> you could have pretty much written this module. <laughs> Yeah, something like that, probably. Oh man, I probably am going to write this one up. It's a lot of I'm having a blast. All right, you said thunderbolts going for the loading, loading dock. Docks. Sirens going for the skylight. What's Bowman going for? Uh, the uh, rear door. Cool, 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 cool. And where's thunder? And uh, where is Daedalus coming in? Um, I mean, I'm going to kind of try to be on like the opposite end from them. Also, uh, I'm still seeing the beach map. Is that what I'm supposed to be seeing? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't moved you guys to the new map. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to be basically on, you know, especially with my flight, I'm going to be on whatever the opposite end of the area is going to be just to, you know, keep, keep eyes on me, Hmm. which is what Daedalus prefers anyway. Excellent. You're probably going to be coming from the same direction that the uh, robot's coming from and then. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Can I pick up the robot? What's your maximum carry capacity? So I'm trying to find. Um, is it on? Is it on these uh, sheets? Uh, see, flight, jump, throwing. I can throw a hundred tons, uh, six feet, and I can throw six tons, one hundred and twenty feet. Okay, so you're you're probably at a twenty-five ton regular limit, I think. <clears throat> What's the strength on it? Um, strength of 10. Uh, you can lift 25 tons, yes. So you could pick up the robot. Okay, I'm just saying if uh, Jingle has anywhere he wants me to like pick him up and just drop him, like drop him like ordnance. I want to come into Skylight. <laughs> I mean, hey, if that's what the kid wants. <laughs> he says that's what he wants. <laughs> so through the power of comic book convenience i'll say that you're all able to breach quote unquote the uh facility at the same time um and as you're approaching you do see that all of santa's workshop has been repurposed into this sort of 1940s industrial factory uh, a lot of the cheerful buildings have been stripped of their colorful paint and the lights, and they've been replaced with sort of these dour gray concrete structures. Uh, there's a number of anti-aircraft cannons that seem to be candy cane striped um, that do take notice of the giant robot and Daedalus, at the very least. Uh, they're firing candy canes up to try and shoot them out of the sky, but the candy canes are not able to overcome either of your imperviouses. Um, and you see this big... Um, ornate structure in the center of everything uh, that has a number of smokestacks coming out of the top of it. There's a big, long skylight down the middle of it. Uh, there's a sign that says Santa's workshop on it, but somebody has crossed out the apostrophe and moved it next to the S the, on the original Santa's workshop. Uh, and looking down, you see there is a number of Santa Clauses in here that all seem to be uh, various... Various differences from what you're used to, Santa Claus. You see one that is riding around in what you can best describe as a tentacled UFO with a head in a jar. There is a sort of dour-looking mob boss with a cigar hanging out of his mouth, orchestrating all of the different elves that are running around with their sort of nondescript 1930s gangster clothes. 
and there is a jacked Santa Claus with a wooden mask and a staff uh, sort of grumbling and moving around the perimeter inspecting different things that they're making. Uh, down on the factory floor itself, you see there are a number of... Looks like they might be making weapons, magical artifacts. It's a little hard to tell from far away, but there's a number of just different children's toys that have taken on almost like a nightmare before Christmas murders bent to them. Uh, and there is an enormous Christmas tree in the middle of the factory floor right underneath the skylight that is covered in glowing orbs and lights and stars and there's packages underneath it. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Uh, but you seem to have complete surprise over them. So what would you guys like to do? Oh, and just to ping, the sleigh dock is down here, Thunderbolt. The skylight is up in the middle here. Bowman, the back door is over here. And then this is the entrance that is farthest away from everybody else, Daedalus, if that's where you're still looking to go. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm at a door right now? Yes. Just to be clear? Okay. Um... I mean, if my goal was to set a distraction, I think my first thought is I'm going to kick the door in and just like not even necessarily add anybody. If the, I don't, you know, I don't even know there's anybody behind the door, but I'm just going to kick it open and like shoot off a blast. <laughs> awesome! Uh, you do kick it open. The first hostile you see is this robot Santa Claus. All right. So, are you the one in charge of figuring out who's naughty and who's nice? Awesome. Um, I'll give you a free shot, Daedalus, and then I think it's uh, initiative for everybody. All right. I'll take it. That's right. Oh, no. 24 the... to hit. 24 will hit. I think. Yeah, 24. I'm going to give him a chance to respond to my quip. It didn't add his toughness on my uh, on the when I imported it, so let me figure out what his toughness is real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but how much protection? I know he's got protection. I'm gonna open my Hero Lab files for these guys, so I can double check all that real quick. The Claws Bot 12,000 has a toughness of 16. Mm, that's much. Uh, he gets a 24 to resist your gravitic blasters, which will be a bruise. So I, I, dent, I dent his UFO a little bit. And his head, his head sort of spins around and looks at you and just gives you this utterly morbid glare. Um, there's something incredibly inhuman behind its eyes. And I want everybody to roll for initiative. Hey, I got a 16 on my initiative roll. Okay, I'll add you in. I should I gotta open all my character sheets because I forgot to do that. I really want to build an encounter character sheet for Roll20, where you can just put all of the stat blocks for mm. all the different characters involved in it on one sheet. That would be glorious.
Right, everybody else loaded in correctly, so that's good news. And then I need a red dot on my little elf. And where does Jingle fall into the initiative? Oh, uh, where does Jingle fall into the initiative? Jingle Holloways down. He gives a 16. Which is a tie with Siren, but I will give Siren the edge. Because Siren's an, a PC. I appreciate that. What's the stat that you compare? Is it dexterity? Uh, agility. Yeah. Agility. <clears throat> and then Thunderbolt has a 15. Okay, awesome. We've got everybody in, I think. Yeah. Yep. Initiative this time went way better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> not, not for, for Bowman. It, it went equally right. bad for Bowman. Which is also as bad as it can get for Bowman. So, uh, Daedalus, you were up first again. So you blast the robot, and then you uh, you have the initiative. Um, let's see. Let me just think real quick. Um, I want to do like a perception check to see if I can tell if there's any kind of a. Uh, you know, weak spots aside from where I've already hit him. Sure, go ahead and give me an insight check. Uh, 23. Um, and then that's opposed by his insight or will, whichever one's better. Uh, you're kind of taking a look at it, and you're having a little trouble getting a read on it. Um, the, the magic of the suit seems to be a little strange to you. However, you do notice with your 23 that there was a glimmer of maybe recognition in when you said, are you the one who controls the naughty list? Mm. All right, I'm going to blast him again. So anyway, I started blasting. So I just started blasting. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 will hit. And he has a bruise already, so... And I forgot that they all have the impaired condition because of how successful you guys were for your uh, cheer off. Uh, which should give him a 29 to this toughness save. So unfortunately, the blast this time goes... Nails him, but doesn't seem to do any damage, Daedalus. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I'm not gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna move a little further away from him. Um, and I, this is not meant as like an actual mechanical taunt, but I'm gonna taunt him like, "Well, come on, don't you have to figure out where I fit on the list?" And he uh, he has this sort of grating mechanical voice that says, "Statement." You are not on the list. But your actions compel me to think that you must be naughty. And you think mm. he's going to come over here and get you if that's what you want, Daedalus. That is what I wanted. Maybe not Well, maybe not what I want. <laughs> what I expect. <laughs> and you are the uh, you are the target of notice, so... He's gonna. It's not his turn yet, but the Lord of Misrule. You're the only person there who seems to be somebody he can attack. So he's gonna take a double move this way. Uh, the Claw looks up and he says, "Boys, seems we have superheroes in our midst. Go over there and show them what we do to those who uh, think they're nice but are really, really naughty." And the elves are all going to scramble over here into cover and ready in action to light Daedalus up when he uh, comes into range. And then these four take uh, spots behind the claw. 
Siren. Okay, so uh, I can fly, so I'm not just going to fall on top of the tree. Um, so I feel like <laughs> for a second, I was like, this might have been dumb. No, I did read that I can fly. Great. Um, superhero landing in a tree. Um, anyways, get through and. Um, it worked for Hawkeye this season, right? Split the tree right in half. Just take the whole thing down. Um, she's going to pull out her water blade thing again. Um, but can she use her... Oh, crud. What is it? The, the, her throwing to like throw the water blade at Musclebound Santa down kind of near below her? Yeah, yeah. That's um you actually have a ranged version of that attack, so if you just want to use that, that's fine too. That's kind of what I was going for. Did I miss Yeah, you've something? got you've got the water blast, which is basically the same thing. Oh, snap. Well that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I get the difference. Yep, it's just a plus ten to hit and still ten damage, just ranged. Uh so that's just plus ten? Yep. Okay, twenty four to hit. That feels like a hit. That'll hit. Sweet. And it's DC 25. Yes, it is. Jack Santa rolls a toughness save. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, he gets a 13 versus your 25, which is a stagger. Um, what happens, Siren? Um, so, with a little bit of stealth that she has, she was able to successfully, like float down to the tippy top of the tree to where she's kind of blending in with that big star and uh, with the distraction happening over there and him feeling like there's nothing in his way and just starts bolting forward. She just again casts it down and he essentially runs into her own blast uh, impaling himself even more with it in like the shoulder or something. Oof. And he looks up at you and Siren, whatever magic is in that mask, uh, feels like bad news. Ooh, I want to take a closer look at that. Well, if you get down there on your next turn, you can take a closer look. <laughs> I believe in you. Uh, are you going to stay there above the tree, or are you going to move? Um, I will... Come down right there. Awesome. Uh, Jingle and the Ro and the Rudolph robot is going to come crashing through the skylight after oh, Siren Jesus. and collapse the Christmas tree in this enormous mechanized Rudolph monstrosity. Okay, so much for the idea I had. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he looks down, he bellows, and he makes this noise through the mechanical robot. And says, you, Chris Kringles, is going to get what she's coming. Where's Santa Claus? And uh, he's going to zap these elves. Which is a DC 25. Uh, they fail the first dodge save. Yeah. He just shoots a beam out of Rudolph's nose at these three guys and just melts them. Nice. And he pounds the the root of the reindeer's hands on its chest. Thunderbolt. Well, uh, originally I was going to fly and see maybe take that tree and throw it at you guys, but uh, that's moot now. Um, <laughs> so I am just going to. Uh, well, do I, I think there's a tree in the room you're in, isn't there? Well, yeah, what do you there's know? one there. All right. The question is, sleigh, is there it, is a uh... sleigh in there too, if you want to use the sleigh. Oh, perfect. Yeah. No, I want to grab the sleigh, move, fly uh, portion there, and then just hurl it at uh, Santa and his goons right there. Excellent. Would you believe they don't have a sleigh in the regular assets on Roll20? 
Uh, but yeah, you could definitely throw it at them. Go ahead and give me a throw check. Oh, I am spending a hero point to uh, re re-roll that just because I have to. <laughs> Excellent. You should have a plus eight to your throw checks, I believe. All right. Still, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll fix that up later. <laughs> mm. So that'd be eighteen. Eighteen, uh, and that's a ten on the dice, so that's actually a twenty-eight. Right. So that will hit everybody down there. <laughs> um, your DC is twenty-five. I'll give you a plus two bonus damage for the sleigh to make it a twenty-seven. Uh, those elves can't roll that high, so they get flattened immediately by the sleigh. And then I'll roll for the claw and see what happens to him. He'll take a bruise. Or actually, he'll take a bruise in a daze because of his impaired condition. So what happens, uh, Thunderbolt? Uh, you just, uh, out of the sleigh, I come with the sleigh and... Uh, as I pass through it, I just let it go, and it just goes barreling in as if I am bowling. <laughs> Elves and go everywhere. Just, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Strike! Excellent. Um, and you smash that throne that, that that Santa Claus was sitting on. Uh, you destroy pretty much that whole end of that area. <laughs> and the claw looks up at you with a cross look on his little rosy face. So you chosen violence. I could do violence. Ah, finally a bad guy to hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, claws bot is going to shuffle over to where Daedalus is and try to tentacle slam him. Which is a multi-attack effect, so that is going to give... Uh, if he rolls high, he'll do more damage. And his bonus to that, just to be a, just to double check, is a plus ten. Okay. Oh, Daedalus, he gets a twelve to hit you, so that's probably not going to hit. As the tentacles, they sort of power up and they begin spinning almost like blender blades, and they slam into the walls around you, but you're able to get out of the way. And Dip, dive, use, duck, dodge. <laughs> he'll use move by action to spring back out into the main room. And I'm going to give everybody a hero point. Oh, I need to start spending these. Let's do it. Um, the claws oh, wow. bot is going to use extra effort to activate its gift. Uh, what's the name of the power? His re-gifting point defense array. Bowman. Hmm. Uh, well, Bowman is, while all of this is going on, I mean, I guess I'll go try to find Santa. I don't know if... I'll try to find Santa, because that was sort of the mission here, and hmm. if it gets real bad, then I'll start shooting arrows at people. So you're sneaking around trying to check where Santa Claus is? Yeah. Do you have to, like, lockpick this door or anything, or...? Uh, not that first one. Oh, but what I need an action to like open and check all these other. I don't think I can reach all of them because I have a speed that allows a uh, sixty feet per round. So mm -hmm. I'm at like fifty five now. So I can maybe get to like the third one, but I assume they're all closed and locked. Um, so the first two are not locked, but you will have to take movement to check them if you want. The third one is locked. Okay. So what, I mean, like, what I need a separate action to do so, because I have move by action, so I can stretch out my um, movement. So you won't need an, you won't need separate actions to check each door that's not locked. Uh, but when you get to the one that is locked, that is an action, because it, it slows you down a little bit more. Okay. All right. Okay. So if I go here... then here, then here. So that's all I can do in one action, is check the first two, and then 
get to the third one in a move action and then use my last standard action to try to open the third door. Yes. Okay. And yes, he is humming to himself. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So checking the first two, is there anything here? Or is it just like... Uh, looking in, it looks like there's a number of... Uh, this looks like this may have been um, sleeping quarters for some of the elves, but that's all been tossed. Okay. Just scooting on to the second one? Uh, the second one also looks like sleeping areas for the elves. Okay. And if this is locked, I will attempt to open sesame. Cool. Um, do I have a thing? I don't Please think slide I... a hand... Okay, no, I, I was I don't I was checking if I had like tools or something, but I don't think I Oh okay. You don't have a multi tool? I think you have a multi tool in your YouTube. Uh, you know armor, cobbling, flashlight, bow and arrow. Universal tools. I don't know. Equipment comblink flashlight. Nope, nope, nope. Hmm. Nope. Maybe I cut that for points. Mayhaps. Uh Probably, because I think he usually does. Um, I don't have anything inside of hand either. So. Uh, then give me a technology check. Sure. Uh, technology. DC's just a little higher for technology. Uh, fortunately, I have hero points to burn. Ooh. I can do better than that. Let's try that again. Slash R one zero plus six. I do the exact same as that. Um, actually, no, because it, it it was the hero point reroll, so that would add to that. If that's if we're doing them in the same way, I rolled yeah, a six yeah. on the die. Okay, then yeah, you would add ten to that. Yep. Yeah. What's your so total? 20, Twenty-two. 22. So you finagle with it for a little bit. You do click the lock and you're able to swing the door open. Uh, you see that this seems to be a single person's room that has been modified to be a cell of some sort. There is a young woman uh, wearing sort of a white and red um, jumpsuit that is unconscious on the bed over here. Ah. Okay, so I'm on the right track. And hopefully no one looks in this direction. Yeah, we'll see. Do I need a stealth check? Um uh, or have yeah, I just uh, give me I one just before to, I moved. We probably should have done that before you moved, but go ahead and give me one just to see how stealthy you're being. Okay. Here comes Bowman and Claus, here comes Bowman and Claus. Right down Bowman and Claus Lane. Uh, I'll take it. Okay. I'll save those two points for uh, toughness checks. Mm. Perfect. Uh, Dataless, back to you. All right. Well, having faced off, I, I recognize that he's got a pretty powerful up close attack, so I want to try and keep my distance on uh, Claws Bot 3000. Um,. Is it 3,000 or 13,000 or? 12,000. 12,000. I was wrong in both cases. <laughs> 1,000 uh, for every day of Christmas. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, it's 1,000 for every day of Christmas. There's 12 days of Christmas. Ah. Uh, um, all right. So, yeah, I'm going to move because I also recognize that, like, these. Uh, you know, some of these guys were trying to bead down on me. Granted, they're most of them got flattened at this point. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna try and hit him with another uh, gravity blast. Hey! Oh, that's a crit. Oh, is it a crit? Oh, that's yeah. a crit. That's a natural target. Oh, yeah. Um, then I'd like to use that crit to add to my uh, my damage count. Perfect. Uh, he's already got a bruise, so we're looking at... And then a minus two. 
for the impaired because of all the good cheer you all spread. So DC 30. Boop. Uh, I rolled a 19 on the dice to get a 32. Well, thank you for all your assistance earlier, Mariah, but still. <laughs> <laughs> we should have put less green M&Ms in her bowl backstage. <laughs> Um, all right, so I moved and I attacked and you know what? I got hero points to burn actually. Um, I am going, I do want to taunt him. Is that a mm. is that deception or is that? That is deception. Yeah. Deception opposed by insight okay. to demoralize. So use my, uh, use extra effort to get an extra, extra standard action. I'll do this deception. Um, and then I'll use my hero point to oof. So unfortunate. Um, do I use my other? I have two more hero points still. Should I use one to reroll? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, re -roll. Well. The thing is, I only have one in deception, so maybe this was not my best course of action. Hmm. Uh, do you have anything in intimidation? I have one in intimidation. He is, oh. it's just, he's just not that type of guy. Um, <laughs> I don't like talking to folks. All right, yeah, you know what? I'm going to save my hero point. It's not worth it. Oh, oh I'll give it back to you. I... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. I will, uh, I'll hold off. I tried I tried to, you know, and, and taunt him to try to get him to come after me. It wasn't effective. He's probably because he's a robot. Hmm. You've still got his attention. Yeah, I've got his attention. He's just not demoralized as the mechanic. Yeah. Also, I don't know what graphic Troy is talking about. I missed it while I was GMing. So Troy, oh, if you, could, amazing. Sh if you oh, could show was, me again. It was an interpretation of like the performance we just did. <laughs> it had dolphins and Fred, and it was awesome. I'm here for that. I'll put you guys over here, just in case he pops it back up. <laughs> I've got another monitor over here. Um, awesome. The Lord of Misrule... Uh, did not like being staggered in the first round, but is going to uh, take the recover action to make that stagger go away. But that's all you can do this round. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Claw, who is dazed from being slammed by the sleigh, is going to raise up his Tommy gun and take a couple of magic shots at Thunderbolt. And that is a multi-attack effect against a single target. It's not a lot of damage, but it is penetrating. Uh, it's penetrating eight. Is that enough to get over your impervious um, Thunderbolt? Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's damage four, penetrating eight, I should say. I got protection 12, uh, impervious. Okay, Plus so so he will have enough penetrating to get past your impervious. And he gets a 37 to hit your dodge DC. Um, what is your dodge DC total? I have an 8. Okay, so he will get plus 5 damage for multi-attack. Giving him a total of DC 23 to shoot you with this Tommy gun. For your toughness save. That's exactly what you needed. <laughs> So you, uh, he sprays up into the air with the bullets. They slam into your containment suit. They make they register more than you were expecting them to, but they bounce off harmlessly. And he's going to take cover over... No, he's dazed, so he's, his daze will fall off. That's all he'll do. Siren. Okay. So, uh... I will... I want to do two actions. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm absolutely going to spend one of my hero points to not go fatigued on that second standard action. Um, and the first thing I want to do is the uh, blinding spray. I'm going to come up to him first. Blinding spray, Jack Santa. Um, um, Ten. Twenty-eight to hit. 
hit. That will hit. Um, For another DC 25 effect. DC 20. Oh, it's the fortitude effect. That's right. Oh, yeah. Wow. Fortitude DC 20. <laughs> and the puffer fish. Oh, man. With the fart lines coming from. And the giraffe horse. Okay. I love this so much. It's amazing. And Fred amazing. and the sleigh. Yeah, the <laughs> turtle. <laughs> it's very cute. Oh, my God. Uh, you, he rolls a 19 versus your DC 20. He suffers the first degree of your blinding spray. Um, read impaired. Hmm. So he's visually impaired. That's bad news. Um, and so then for the second action, I am coming in with the knife, with my, my water weapon, um, who slicey slice. I believe in you. Uh, that is plus heavy. Wait, no, that's... A uh, d20 plus 10. Okay, thank you. No! <laughs> Sorry, that was loud. I'm re-rolling that. I refuse. <laughs> uh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's no, all good. Twenty plus ten. Go. Yes. Twenty-five is much better. Yeah. And, and that's a one. DC twenty-five. He's got one bruise and his Mariah Carey penalty. <laughs> you stagger him again. Um. Wow. Siren did not come around to mess around with this guy. <laughs> what happens, Siren, as you spray salt water in his eyes and then stab him a bunch? Um, so, uh, whenever she rushes up, she collects like both hands uh, to her sides and does a swiping motion to cast the sea foam across his face again. And... With the second action, she manifests the sword and slices down shoulder, collarbone, through the other side. And Excellent. she is going to be like, I really want to see your mask. He rolls back and he says, this mask, this mask is not for you to see, but to unveil the mask you hide yourself behind. I like my mask. Most people who have something to hide do. Do you want to move or are you happy staying in his face? Oh, well, technically I did move to get in his face. Oh, okay. okay. Do I need to... Never mind, go ahead. I'll, I'll do that at the top of next round. If you have move by action, you can also move after your attack. If you have that... No, advantage. I meant to do expertise magic on the mask before I, I attacked him. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's I'll, probably I'll wait it. for my next turn. It's fine. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Rudolph sees that there is trouble with this robot over here, and he's going to stomp over yonder. He sort of rakes his hooves and is going to charge to try to gore this uh, robot. To help that's out Dados. So <laughs> and he'll hit. For a DC 29 toughest save. I like how the listing oh. is gore. Yeah. Actually, I forgot that the claw spot's got his point defense on. I've got to roll to see if he avoids the attack. Uh, he So when you're doing an active defense like deflect, you get to add 10 if it's under 10. Uh, he does succeed on that, so he will actually redirect the Gorain attack. And he'll redirect it into Daedalus. Oh no! Uh, and get a 27 to hit Daedalus' dodge DC. No! Yeah, I think that hits. I think That's that why hits. I gave everybody a hero point. <laughs> 
Uh, give me a time to save. Data, um, what you're looking for a 29. Oh, oh man. Uh, so close. That's not bad. That's a bruise. That's not bad. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, so the um, as the ro as the Rudolph is storming over to gore this robot, it releases these little elf drones with rockets on the bottom of them that go up and plink onto the side of the robot's head and steer it over to hit Daedalus. And Jingle says, ah, man, I'm sorry about that. You alive? I'll live. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. You human types are usually like water balloons full of meat and blood and stuff, so I like to be careful with you. Thunderbolt. Okay, I am going to uh, fly up, sort of side to uh, where that is. Give him a lightning uh, bolt. Ooh, oh, so close. And 26 then, is a hit, though. Yeah, I was hoping for the crit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then DC, I'll fly off. DC 27. Where? He's rocking. He's hurt. I pushed the button. I wonder if it'll take it. Uh, that'll be a 20 on his toughness save for a bruise in a daze. Uh, so what does it look like as you come in and zap him again? Uh, it just looks like somebody flying art on the side as a, just a big electrical arc between us uh, occurs. And then I fly around so that I'm now uh, in his rear. Excellent. And he's shaking his little meaty fist at you. Uh, the claws bot is no longer redirecting attacks against itself because it's the start of the claws bot's turn. But on its turn, it will see the damaging situation going on over there, and he is going to pop a couple of machine gun looking tubes out of the front of the UFO, and he's going to multi attack with his coal launcher against Daedalus and the robot. So, Daedalus. 19 to hit your dodge, DC? Did Jimmy RC? No, I think his headphones went out. Oh. Oh, no. He dropped off a roll 22, so I hope everything's okay. I can still see him on the chat, though, so... Yeah, the camera's it's real. Working. I don't know if he's in the stream chat still. Suddenly can't hear anything. Hmm. He'll be back. He's back on roll 20, so he's probably... Oh, okay. Very far away, I could hear you. Hi, big guy. Come here. Better now? A little bit. You're still a little quiet. How about now? Oh, much better. Much better. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. That's oh, okay. Does a 19 hit your dodge DC? I don't think it does. Uh, 19. No, it would. Yeah, because it's a, eight. it's a dodge plus 10, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So what am I? Uh, what am I getting hit with? Uh, the um. Clawsbot pulled out a couple of different machine guns and started firing uh, coal at you. Hmm. Don't love that. Um. So toughness check. Yes. Yep. You're looking for a 23. Nice. Hey, 28. Oh, you're perfectly fine. Uh, the robot gets a little dented uh, from the critical hit that it suffered, but Daedalus, you are trucking. You're good to go. 
Bowman. Bowman is going to continue his Grinch impression by checking every room. Um, I'll leave uh, presumably Mrs. Claus in that room. It's fair. Because we said we need, we need to find Santa Claus, so I don't want to drag someone else into this fight. Mm. But I am going to keep on moving down. Um, and I should have enough movement to... Oh, oh no, yeah, I can move 60. Um, so I'll just keep going downwards, I guess. Uh, is okay. the, this door locked? Uh, this door is not locked, and it appears to open into some kind of study. Uh, there's a desk in there, there's a chair, a couple of bookshelves. Is this one locked? It is locked. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll stop and unlock it, and then if there's nothing there, I'll use the last of my movement to move on. Cool. Okay, technology check. With that as my technology. Plus... It's... Ooh, that's not so groovy. I'm going to spend a point on that. Awesome. Since this is the entire point of why I'm here, I need to make sure I actually do well <laughs> at it. <laughs> I need to crisp my Kringles. Uh, try that again. Well, technically 17, but that's not really great either. Uh, 17 is enough to pick the lock door. Oh. Uh, and inside, you see this is another, it appears to be another makeshift cell. And unconscious on the ground, you can see uh, what appears to be Santa Claus. <gasps> uh, and his red coat, red, red and white coat, his hat is missing. Um, he's got one arm up, the other arm is sort of twisted at a natural angle to his side, and his face is down on the hardwood. Oh. And he's unconscious? Uh, hard to tell from this distance. Um, I don't really have more actions. All I have is like five feet of movement left. Uh, you, I'll give you enough movement to get to him. I'll just step into the room. And uh, can I attempt to rouse him awake? Sure. Just like nudge him slightly. <laughs> See if I get any so you go to uh, touch him and rustle him, and the red coat and the white, um, the white and red fur coat sort of mushes underneath your hands, and his body sort of morphs in outside of itself, sort of turns inside out backwards. So his face is looking up at you with these glassy eyes. Oh no! And he's going to grab onto you like some kind of strange play to east Santa Claus mimic. Oh, it's a trap. That visual was terrifying. <laughs> it also job. made me think of like the, the mushy men from Howl's Moving Castle that the Witch of the Waste used. Mm. Um, does a 15 hit your vulnerable parry, DC? Uh, my vulnerable parry would be 15. And cool, the tie cool. would go to the attacker. It would. And I am the Santa attacker at this moment. Uh, give me a strength check. Oh, no. <laughs> strength. Oof. 21. You know, I've got good news and bad news. Mm. What's the good news? You're not immobile and defenseless. What's the bad news? Uh, you are restrained, and he begins to start choking you. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> as he morphs up onto your body as the sort of horrible Play-Doh silly putty facsimile of a human, and the <laughs> pseudopod goes up around your neck and starts choking you. You are hindered and vulnerable, and I'll need a fortitude check on save on your next round, next turn. Is there any chance we can hear this in our comms? Uh... <laughs> High or low? I don't know that Fletcher would scream in panic. Mm, that's I true. also didn't explicitly say anything, so... 
Mm. I'll take. You know what? Give me a will save, Bowman. Okay. See if you have the grit to not shriek when the terrible zombie Puedo Santa Claus tries to kill you. Fourteen. Um. You let out a noise that's not as dignified as you wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, it turns out I sound like Mariah Carey when I scream. <laughs> Listen, we can all hope to hit those kind of notes. All right. I just that gave you a hair sense. point, but you're getting another one. That makes sense because it's constricting your throat, and so that's going to force you up into the whistle tones when you scream. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is... Oh, no! <laughs> awesome. But that's the uh, that's Bowman and the Splanta. <laughs> Troy called it the Splanta, so the Splanta is going to be what it is. Daedalus. Um, so I am thinking, basically based on what I've heard and also the fact that, like, I feel like Jingle's got this other robot. I'm going to, you know, I'll circle back around. Um, you know, Bowman's squishier. Mm. Uh, I'm going to fly. Oh, I don't have my selector. I'm going to fly across the room. How far can I move in one round? With I guess with my flight, I can really kind of just. Yeah, I think it's like a mile or a half mile or something like that. Okay, well, and wait, do I have move by action? I don't, so I am just going to... I'm going to move to about the halfway point in the room, um, and I'm going to use uh, my uh, gravity blasters. I'm going to use extra effort to turn into a multi-attack um, to hit these three uh, elves over here. Okay. Basically, kind of just doing a fly-by, like, bombing. Perfect. Um. So I just need to roll. I need to roll that as what three attacks with negative three on each. Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's... Boom. Come on. And one, two, three. Ugh. Uh, so we've got seventeen, uh, eleven, and fourteen. Uh, the fourteen and above will hit. Okay, so that's two hits um, for DCs of 25. Or actually, yeah, a DC 25. And that's two downed L's. All right, and I just, uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm like, I'm on my way, Bowman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, good job, Daedalus. Uh, the Lord of Misrule is staggered again despite all of his best efforts. But he will wave his hand over uh, Siren. And he is going to... Siren, you hear the wood cracking on the mask that he's wearing, and you feel this sort of deep, dark, wintry feeling pervade your thoughts. I'm going to need a will save. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, no. I can do better than that. You can do a lot better than that. <laughs> yeah. Rill is my highest defense stat. Like, there's no reason it needs to be that low. Oh, 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 but 10, so that's a 28. Perfect. Um, so the magic of the mask sort of seeps into your mind, but it doesn't seem to have any negative effect. You feel a sort of deep chill pass through your center, uh, but you don't suffer any sort of setbacks from it. And he looks at you and he furrows his eyebrows. But he's staggered, so that's all he can do. Okay. Uh, the claw, who is dazed... Uh, looks around. 
this is not going his way. This is not really something he's great at. Um, he's going to take a move action to get on the other side of this thing away from Thunderbolt to try to take some cover. And then his days will drop off at the end of his round. Siren, over to you. Okay. Um, can I use flight to make it to Bowman for my movement? Yeah, I think you've got plenty of movement to get over there. You go like 30 miles an hour, which is 500 feet around, I think. Yeah. That's what I just read. Um, so. And you're only 80 feet away from Bowman. Awesome. So it's like, I can't just run over. I don't have enough, like, regular movement. Okay. So I'm going to fly in here and uh, slicey, slicey this weird not Santa. When you come into the room, uh, the pseudopod on top of where Bowman's head is that's covering his mouth, a little Santa head grows out of it. Oh. It says, leave us! This one is mine. He has been naughty. That, that, that's not how this works. 28 again. 28 will hit the Santa thing. And that's a or DC 25. 25. Your powers are water-based, so you actually do an extra degree of damage to this thing. I know we're at the wrong pole, but I'm just kind of getting the thing vibes here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Siren, he would usually take a bruise from this, but because of a weakness to water he has that you didn't know about, he takes a bruise and a daze. Oh. What happens? Uh, I'm going to say she, um, she aims for like the main like connecting point to sever the ah uh, what's the word you were using about the thing wrapping around his neck pseudopod, pseudopod. yeah i kept wanting to say cephalopod and i was like no pseudopod <laughs> so she's gonna she's gonna like slice at the connecting point of the pseudopod to get it to separate from its main body and it can detach from bowman well, it doesn't detach from Bowman, but you do cut the little Santa head off, and it splats onto the ground and turns into candy cane colored mush. Gross. Disturbing. Okay. All right. After Siren is the robot. Little robot on robot action over there in the corner. He's going to try to gore the claws bot again. This time he's going to use five points of all-out attack and five points of power attack. And get a critical hit, because that's... Because <laughs> sometimes NPC action is NPC action. Um, so that's five points for the power attack and five points for the critical for a DC 39 for the claws bot. Oh no. Uh, it gets a 26, so it'll take its first stagger as the uh, as Rudy, or as Jingle, comes in and rocks his world. Nice. Thunderbolt. Okay. Uh, well, it's a cause, you know, trying to get cover, but I f I'm flying, so that's not really that big of a deal as I fly basically right, you know, still in the air, right behind him. <laughs> now the blast. No! <laughs> oh, again, one more than last time. It's so close. <laughs> oh, man. You're merciless with these thunderbolts. Uh, thunderbolts and lightning. DC 27, you say? I get a 21 for another bruise in a daze. You're whittling him down, Thunderbolt. What happens? All right. Again, I just uh, give him a, a, a shock. Uh, as as there is again, as I just arc, it's like oh, man, cover and take off. Again, sort of as it did uh, an arc there. 
Thunderbolt's the light show, as the lightning is just going on, and he's swooping around the room. I'm here for it. That's awesome. Anything else, Thunderbolt, or are you happy with that being the end of your I'm time? happy with that. Awesome. Uh, the Quasbot is going to return the favor to Rudolph. And do a tentacle slam, which is multi-attack, and he'll use... Since they're fighting to the robot death, it'll be a uh, all-out power attack for five. Uh, he will slam into Rudy. Uh, that's 26 to hit versus Rudy's parry of six. So that'll be plus five damage for multi-attack and plus five damage for power attack. So 39, since they're just trading blows back and forth. And Rudy will get a 30. For another bruise in a daze. Alright, Roman. Please give me a fortitude save. Yep. Doesn't see. You're okay. You don't get knocked out from being choked. Okay. Can I, like, tear away what's left of the appendage around my neck? Yeah, you can uh, overcome the grab with a uh, strength check. Um, or a dodge check. The strength or dodge? Yep. I probably use dodge. And it does have improved hold, so you do get a minus five to penalty check to try to get away from it. Okay, so that would be this much. I don't think that's going to do it. No, that's not enough to get it off of your face. Um, is it? No, I don't want it on my face. It's going to, like, strangle me again. I got to get out of this thing. <laughs> I'm sure Some, this thing got a bunch can, of hero points. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm saving them for, not dying. <laughs> okay, mm, not better. Nineteen. Uh, that is not enough to make the situation better. Okay, so am I like actively being strangled at the moment, or did I just like with the forty-two save fend off that effect? Uh, you found it out the first round. Next round would be a DC 11 instead of a DC 10 fortitude save. Oh, it's like a... Okay. It gets worse the longer you're being choked. Can I see? You can't see. Uh, okay, then I will... That attempt to escape is already a standard action, right? Right. I gotta check that last room. It's, it's process of elimination. And you are vulnerable while you're grabbed. You're hindered while you're grabbed this way, so you move at half speed. Is there some way I can assist him in the removal of the thing? Uh, you could spend an action to try to get it off. Um, you would, uh, you would want to do damage to it to try to remove the grab. Um, but that would be on your next turn. Yeah, we're not. Okay, sorry. No problem. Okay, so I've got a move action left, and I'm not physically attached to this thing, and I wasn't immobile anyways, but it's going to strangle my face. So... No, i I got I to gotta check this last room. I, don't, I just don't want to leave Siren alone. I so can, I, I, I can, you, you save you. You go do your thing. I'm fine. You sure? I mean... Okay, I will take my move action, then I will extra effort to check the last room if it's locked. It is locked. Then I shall uh, attempt to make that not so. Excellent. I can do 30 feet, which should be... That's enough to get you More there. than enough to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Groovy. So, doop, doop. You're, you're going, and the thing <laughs> is stretching like saltwater taffy as you're leaving the room. <laughs> it's like still wrapped around your head just feeling his way through what glimpses he could see getting towards the other door awesome go ahead and give me that technology check to try to pick the lock with that extra effort okay let me um, probably a bad idea to be fatigued right now I'm gonna spend the point the last thing I need is for this to be worse <laughs> Um, ba, 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 technology. Here we go. 15. 
That is enough to pick this lock. Yep. And inside, you can see what looks like Santa Claus uh, tied up in a chair at the end of the room. He looks a little beat up, but otherwise not worse for wear. Is he awake? Uh, he's not awake. Okay. Well, that's a problem for next round. Cool. Uh, because you're still grabbed, it gets to do its strength damage to you as a free action. So go ahead and give me a toughness save, Bowman. You're looking for a DC uh, 22. Okay. Did it... Sorry, 27. You're looking for a DC 27 toughness save. Did it bruise me earlier, or did it just grab me earlier? It just grabbed you earlier. Right, okay. Just making sure I didn't miss... 27? Mm. That's a bruise in a daze, if you want to take that. Uh, I gotta save that point for staggers or anything else. If I'm not going unconscious, I shouldn't spend it. So yeah, bruise in a daze. So it's just, it's constricting and it's crushing and it's trying to break your skull underneath its grasp. Um, meanwhile, with its actual standard action, it is dazed, but the beard up around where your head is, Bowman, it slides down the thing's body. And it's going to try to latch onto Siren's face and try to choke her, too. Oh. And get a natural 20 to hit Siren. <laughs> So, Siren, I need a strength check to resist uh, the grab. Okay. This one might actually be the biggest threat. <laughs> right. I think that's how I do that. Yeah, it's just a d20 plus your strength modifier. At least roll twenty. At least roll twenty thinks this is the biggest threat for some reason. Um, you said a dirty twenty. Yeah. You are immobilized and defenseless as it grabs your face. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have left. Uh, and you will start choking next round. You'll have to start making the same saves that Bowman's making. Oh my god! As the beard comes up and you feel the fuzzy hair turn into more muscly feelers that grab onto you. Oh, and pull you hey. into the pseudo pod. <laughs> Daedalus. Oh, man. Uh, do I catch any of that over comms, just to be clear? Uh, I think you see I it from where you're at. Because he's... Okay. Bowman came out of this room and he's carrying basically a Stretch Armstrong with him attached to his face. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, I'm trying to say... So my initial plan once I was like, oh, cool, Siren's got this... I was going to slam attack into, uh, into, I was like, oh, cool, we'll trade dance partners, and I was slamming the other one. But now I'm like, maybe I do need to intervene still. <laughs> oh, man. What did yeah. let's do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yep, Daedalus has to intervene. Um, he's going to rush over to Bowman, just like rockets going as hard as they can to get get over there um what do i do can i i don't want to rip this thing off because if i rip it off it's just going to be on me i was trying to think if i use my gravity a uh, gun to basically like kind of like how uh, how venom doesn't like sound mm. <laughs> um just basically shoot him. i say basically just like use use it at like a low setting where it doesn't hurt bowman but does hurt uh this guy um, so it sounds like what you want to do is power stunt and nullify using your technology to, or your, your gravitic blasters to try to nullify its uh, grabbing power. Like an instant, Sorry, like, an, like, like countering an effect, uh, basically, which is something you can do, um, with extra effort. And if you want to use a hero point to avoid going fatigued, you can do that or you can go fatigued. Um, and what that would be would be a d20 plus 10 for your blaster. Oh, oh no. Come back, RC. Oh no. Interweb problems, I guess. RC, you've got to save the you've got to save the gang. Yeah, save me. I'm stuck behind these dolphins. <laughs> this way. Hide. <laughs> <laughs> you can't choke us if we're underwater, right? 
All right. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. RC, you're here. back. Awesome. Um, so what you yeah. could do is you could use extra effort to try to counter the grab effect on both of them, uh, which would be a hero point to avoid the fatigue. Um, and then you would roll a d20 plus 10 for your blasters versus its grab power of plus 12. Gotcha. Um, so, whoa. Um, so my d20 was 7, so plus my blasters would be... Um, uh, 17. Yeah. No, actually, my blasters say plus 8 on their offense. It's the so, power okay. rank, not the uh, not the to hit. Bonus. Oh, not the not the not the to hit. Oh, okay, then yeah. So yeah, it'd be a seventeen. So if you if you want to spend the hero point to reroll, you'll have to go fatigued after. Yeah, I'm fine effort. with going. I'm fine with going fatigued. I, I'd been planning on just ignoring it, but now I, I was hoping to ignore it, but still have the hero point. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll reroll. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, we're not out of this yet. Um, oh wait, why is it doing this? 22. I rolled a 21, so that is enough to nullify the grab power that will set Bowman and Siren free as the pseudopod. Um, what happens as you make it release your comrades? Uh, oh, wait, I'm confused. It's releasing both of them? It's going to release both of them. Oh, okay. You actually um, switched yeah. off the power that it uses to grab people. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I imagine that I just, like, charge up my, bla- my, my uh, gravity blaster to a low level I just say, you know, like, Bowman, hold still, and I just, like, you know, do just do the right frequency that it's not, it's hurting this thing, but it's not hurting him. And just, like, basically just shot him in the head, basically. <laughs> yeah, the noise uh, reverberates down through the um, creature, and it sort of says, ho, ho, no, and it sucks itself back into a humanoid form uh, standing before Siren. Thank you. Um, Thanks, boss. That's fine. We're not out of the woods yet, folks. <laughs> uh, and then after Daedalus is the staggered Lord of Misrule, who is starting to see that cowardice might be the better part of valor, and he is going to disappear in a snow flurry. Oh. Uh, the claw is going to head over here next to his elves. Oh, and he's dazed. That's all he can do. Uh, this other elf is going to come and join him on his turn as well. Siren. I don't have any effects on me right now. Right, it's... right. You're free. You're not choking yeah. anymore. Um. Not as, like, a serious action, but she's going to kind of, like, kick the body on the ground and be like, I did not consent, and take off out of the room uh, back to her other foe. Where'd he go? Where are you at? Oh, wait, did he? He's the one who disappeared in the cloud of in a snow flurry. Oh, yeah, he just went bamf. Sorry, I got confused with the claw guy. Um, well, is he dead dead or is he just incapacitated? Uh, this thing is not unconscious. It's just not grabbing you anymore. You think it's still an active threat. There's no attack okay. opportunity if you want to get away from it, but you do think it is still... Yeah. Like... So I'm going to... Whatever line of sight I need. She's going to fly away and do the water blast because <laughs> she does not want to be within touching distance of it. Hmm. Uh, 14 will not hit if you if you're happy with the 14. That's fine. I got away. That's what matters. She's so the wa- not not looking. She's just like screw you. <laughs> you. Fire a water balloon back behind you, and it sort of stretches around the splash and looks real yeah. grumpy. Uh, Rudy's going to continue the NPC abuse and do five points of out and five points of power again. Roll 20 will let me know uh, that that is a miss. See he's stomping around. Thunderbolt. All right. Uh, I am just going to zip as I have been. 
get behind him. Can I spend a hero point and arc my lightning bolt to just make the collective three of them that are all standing there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a power stone. Uh, yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes. All right. Spend one. And let's go. And of course, it's a one. <laughs> I am spending a hero point to re-roll that, please. <laughs> That's whack. Come on, roll 20. Uh, better. <laughs> awesome. And it is multi-attack against multiple targets, so that's mm -hmm. the first target, who we'll say is Claw, for a 20, and you get a minus 3 for a 22, which will hit, and then give me two more rolls for the, for the elves that are right there. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, you definitely annihilate the elves. They can't roll a twenty-seven, so I'll just, yeah. I'll take them off the board. Nice. And Chris is not feeling good. Um, let's see where we're at. He gets another bruise in a daze. He's oh, he's really lightning resistant for having as low a toughness as he has right now. Is <laughs> it back? Come down here and fight me, you coward. <laughs> we all know yeah. that Santas are resistant to lightning damage. It, it, this is known. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think about just... sleigh, high atmospheric weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many times does Santa get struck by lightning every trip? Uh, anything else, Thunderbolt, or are you happy? I am again? just moving, uh, the, uh, again, zip out uh, of the way. It's like, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the cause bot is staggered, but he is going to fire his elf propelled missiles over here since you guys are in fireball formation. Mm. And he has enough radius to hit all of you. So some rockets with elf faces fly over there. I need the three of you to make dodge saves, please. Uh, is this an area? Yes, so if you have area, evasion, that's... if you have evasion, you would get a bonus. Uh, I need a DC 22 dodge save from Daedalus, Siren, and Bowen. Dodge with my evasion. That sucks. Uh, 13. Uh, 13. 13 means you'll roll against the full DC 27 damage for your toughness. Uh, oh. Bowman, you're going to be looking for DC 22 toughness save. And bruised. Uh, that's a staggered data was. Yeah, I know. Also, I realized I still have my hero point. Let me just put that on the field real quick. Hmm. Like I forgot to give it. Santa Claus is about to TPK everybody. <laughs> um, I am going to spend my last hero point on the toughness save. That is only a stagger if that's any sort of idea, Bowman. Because it's 22 minus 8 is... Math at 14. That's not great, but... No, yeah, I should probably have a point on hand to keep it going unconscious. If the goo if the Splanta is still here, then... <laughs> The Splanta! Not the Splanta! <laughs> I'm gonna and then, it, uh, so. Siren, can I get that dodge save? That's a good... That's a good dodge save. Uh, I need a toughness save versus a 22. <laughs> oh, happy. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's a bruise in a daze with a 16. It's up to you if you want to spend a hero point to reroll. Mm, that's the first damage I've actually taken. What do you guys think? Should I reroll this one or... I wouldn't. I'd say hold off. Just a bruise yeah, like this, right? Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. gonna take it. 
Cool, 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 cool. And that's his. He's staggered, so that's all he can do. Bowman. Okay, I am staggered in day, so I've only got one action. Um, would I be able to move in there and wake up Santa? Yeah, you can definitely try. I don't like the try part of that. But... <laughs> do or do not. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming he's in the back of the room somewhere, so I'll yes, scoot yep. my way in and try to shake him awake or something. Yeah, go ahead and give me a treatment check. Or should I poke him with the end of an arrow? <laughs> <laughs> the other end, like turn it around and <laughs> mm -mm. send him a taser arrow. Yeah, that'll get him going. Uh, that'll get me off the nice list. <laughs> what, did, <laughs> what did you do on Saturday night? I tell you, Santa Claus. <laughs> um, I don't have a score in treatment, so I don't believe I'm trained in it. Uh, and I think treatment, you had to be trained to attempt it. So um, give me a flat intellect check to see if you can, if you know enough about getting him back awake. Okay. Uh, I got to save that point for not dying. So eight. Uh, you go in, you start examining him. Uh, you're not sure if it's because you've got too much of your own blood all over you. And you're a little concussed, but you're messing with trying to get him to come back up, and he's just uh, not rousing. No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk it for a chocolate biscuit. I'm gonna spend the point. And I'm going to reroll that. <laughs> Use some cookies, like smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have a cookie arrow? Can... <laughs> you don't keep Can any like, rations on yourself. A cookie arrow. <laughs> yes. Um, I can make an affliction eight cookie arrow. I don't know what it'll do, but... <laughs> I was thinking a healing arrow, like a smelling salts cookie, air, cookie arrow. Um, Imagine yeah, if just... Bed Bath & Beyond made, or, uh, yeah, Bed Bath or Bath & Body Works made smelling salts. <laughs> or Yankee Candles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can't brain up how much an, a healing arrow would cost, but... <laughs> uh, it's one point per rank. So, however many ranks you have in your, it's right. You have rank eight, right, for your afflictions. Um. Yeah, I think they're one point per rank. If I have uh, if seventeen there, and the thing is, they are two points per rank, maybe. Yeah, there's. Oh wait, it's, it's removable, so my calculations are probably incorrect. But I'm. But you, going can get, to... you can get a healing eight. So go okay. ahead and give me a D20 plus 8 to see if you can wake him up. This better work because it's really cool and it would really suck if it didn't. Heart of the cards. Yeah, roll 20. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Um, that was a natural 1 for a total of a 9 for the cookie Indeed. arrow. Indeed. Can I can I give my my hero point? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's a power. I imagine Fletcher's just like, what did I even make this for? <laughs> <laughs> what do I even have? <laughs> it's a snack arrow, man. Wake up! <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. So you you put it up under his nose, and he just sort of mumbles a little bit and doesn't wake up. Dang it, Santa. Oh man. And now the Splanta is going to go. Oh no. <laughs> and Daedalus has deactivated his grabbing power, but he is still going to slide out here. And as he slithers up, he comes up, and two halves of him split into these pseudopods that are going to try to punch oh, Daedalus no. and Siren. What? Which is a multi attack. Uh, it's a minus two to hit both of you. Uh, he gets a natural yeah. one to hit Daedalus, so Daedalus survives one more round. And uh, 21 to hit Siren's parry DC. Twenty. <laughs> I need a DC 25 toughness save. Uh. 
You didn't add a plus to that. Oh, I didn't. That's or you hit plus, or you hit plus equals ten. Fine. So yeah, that's twenty six. Uh, twenty six is fine. You're good. He comes in and slaps, you know, slams the fist out at you. Uh, you're able to easily get out of the way before it does nope. too much damage. I still didn't consent. He goes. Blah, 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 blah. Dataless. Oh, cool. Um, trying to think. Actually, you know what? Yeah, this thing has caused us so many problems. I am just going to turn um, and I am going to use uh, my blasters on it. I just want to try and blow it to Kingdom Come. Excellent. I thought about trying to do it as a multi attack, but I'll see how it does this round because I don't have any hero points left. Hmm. Twenty-four hit. That'll hit. All right. And it's got one bruise plus its Mariah Carey penalty. Uh, it takes another bruise. Oh, I'll accept it. <laughs> as uh, what happens um, as you do some more damage to the Splanta? Um. Yeah, I'm doing the damage, but I'm also like flying away at the same time like it's just like a like a flyby like choo, 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 choo. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> excellent uh anything yeah, else gonna... stateless or are you yeah i'm flying over to like here heading back towards the other enemies try and keep my you distance are this um, thing. you are staggered so are you gonna use extra oh that's right to... you are right i am not going no i'm not i'm not in a position to to push myself further at this at this exact stage uh the Santa Claus with the Tommy gun, who is fighting the demigod full of thunderbolts, is uh, having about as good a time as the rest of the party is having. He will shoot at Thunderbolt again, this time with all out and power attack. Oh, man. Jeez, please. Uh, he does hit, and you have an eight dodge or a six dodge, Sean? Eight dodge. A dodge. Okay, so he gets 11 above that, which is 3 degrees. So that is uh, plus 5 for multi-attack, plus 5 for power attack, DC 29 toughness save. Oof. With a Tommy gun. Uh, that's a bruise in a daze, uh, Thunderbolt, as he sort of fills you with candy cane striped bullets. Unless you want to spend a hero point to reroll, but that's up to you. I'll take the days. Okay. And his days falls off at the end of his turn. Siren. Okay, because I'm dazed, I can only move or do something? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, I'm definitely going to say over the column, Splanta is... Um, uh, the water does extra damage to Splanta. Um, and... I want, uh, okay, so I have advantages. I'm a ritualist. I can use expertise magic to create and perform a ritual. Mm -hmm. Can I, like, gear one up this round to be able to take it over to Santa next round and put it on him to help him get better and wake up? Yeah, you can start designing a healing ritual this round if you want. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and give me an expertise magic check. Okay. You're jury rigging it, basically, is what is how ritual casting works in combat. Okay. And in one shots like this, I'm a lot more loose on the rules of it. So. Nineteen. Uh, Nineteen is enough to power to basically get a free power stunt of a healing spell. Okay. And then your days will drop off at the end of your turn. Great. Uh, what does this look like? What does this ritual casting look like? Um, so it's just, she's gonna, uh, she's gonna be floating in midair and put her legs into lotus position and just concentrate her hands together and this small little, uh, glowing ball of water is slowly growing with more and more energy in her hands and she's just concentrating on that for a second. Excellent. 
Uh, Rudy is going to all-out and power attack uh, Clausbot again. Since Clausbot tried to kill all of you. <laughs> I'm really glad we brought Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He rolled a natural one because you were really glad you brought him. So the Clausbot... Don't be nice to him! Gets out of the <laughs> Uh, Thunderbolt. Depowered him. <laughs> okay, well, since I'm dazed, I am uh, just going to uh, shoot from where I am at Claws again. Let's see there. Yeah, that's another great hit. 27. Oh, no. Uh, he misses by 20 when he rolls a 7, so what happens is you take him down, Thunderbolt? Yeah. Finally! <laughs> nice. All he had to do was give you a little bit of damage, and then you were like, bam, take that, nerd. Uh, and then your days will drop off at the end of your turn, Thunderbolt, unless you want to use extra effort to do anything. Nope. Um, really. Uh, the claws bot is going to attack Rudy this time. With his own five points of power attack, five points of... Uh, or he's got five all, all at five power, and he's doing the multi-attack tentacle slam. So, DC 39 for Rudy. Uh, Rudy gets a stagger. As he rolls a twenty-seven, and the robot's um, tentacles sort of rip into the chassis of the robot of the reindeer robot, and begin blending and tearing metal away. And you can see sparks and smoke erupting over there. Bowman. Um. Okay. So there's a ritual on coming to wake up Santa. Is there worth it me going over there, or should I just wait for Siren? Are you asking me? It's up to you. I don't know. I, I'm asking the table. <laughs> Omen, get out here. <laughs> All right, well. Go fire some arrows. Yeah. Do you have a water oh. arrow? I mean, I'm still... Well, I didn't get... I think my days dropped at the end of last round. But you're still staggered. I'm still staggered, yeah, yeah. Hey, is uh, Snatch's workshop up to uh, safety codes? Maybe there's a uh, ex water uh, ex for a fire suppressor system. Um, shoot, that sounds oh, that sounds like a hero point thing, though. I don't know. <laughs> I do not have a hero point to do that with. I'm amenable. I'm here for it. It's 9.15. We should probably come to some kind of conclusion soon. <laughs> <laughs> we either well, all need to die or we need to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid a TPK. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some sort of sprinkler system that I can trip them? Yes. Yes. Okay. Nice. Explosive arrow at the roof. Bowman is bombing Santa's workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it's what needs to be done. <laughs> um... Okay. A phrase you're only going to hear in a role-playing game. <laughs> right. Uh, this is wild. Okay. Um, so you you blow up the roof above you and start the sprinklers going throughout this local area. I'm going to call that an area burst damage effect for Splanta. And I'll make it DC 25. So 20 dodge save for him. He'll make the dodge save, so it's DC 20 toughness save. And he's got two bruises. This is a water thing, which is no good for him. And he's got his Mariah Carey penalty, so this is... He's been carrying that with him this whole time. He has been. Uh, so that's an 11 versus a DC 20. Uh, which is normally a bruise in a daze, but because of his weakness, it's a stagger. As he begins melting from the oncoming rainwater, sprinkler water, 
melted snow. <laughs> uh, anything else, Bobin? Um, stagger doesn't limit my actions, right? It's just on me all the time until I get rid of it. Uh, it's a again. permanent days until you uh, get the stagger off. Well, I did a thing, and that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, the Splanta is going to have to roll another dodge save for damage on its turn. Because it is in the sunlight like a vampire. And it, it failed the first dodge save, so this is a DC 25 toughness for it. <laughs> the Splanta melts into goo. Still don't like it. Uh, taking it out of combat. Daedalus. Um, out of curiosity, with the um, sprinklers going on, can I see the other um, the other Santa? Like, I, I didn't I didn't know if he was just like invisible or what his uh, thing was. Oh, he is gone. He teleported away. Oh, he is out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, he ran away. He he is the one who's going to survive for the sequel. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, then, if that's the case, given the lay of the land, I am going to rock it back over. Um, oh, wait, I'm staggered, right? Um, you can do a slam attack if you're feeling frisky. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so that'll be either your unarmed damage or your speed damage plus one, which, or unarmed plus one or speed damage plus one, whichever is higher. Uh, they're the same. Okay. I think. Let me make sure. Um... I think your unarmed damage is 10, so I think it's a little higher than your speed. Yeah, yeah, so unarmed would be the better choice. And you can use power attack on this if you want. The only stipulation is, however much damage you do, you're going to have to resist a toughness effect for half that amount of damage. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to go for the full full tilt. Awesome. Do you have power attack the advantage? Um, I don't, no. But you can still do two points. Yeah. So that's damage um, 13 for the claws bot, and it'll be damage 7 for you. Or, sorry, 6 for you. You round Do out. I have to roll it still? You still have to roll to hit, yeah. Hit. Yeah, yeah. And okay. it's just your unarmed to hit, so. <sighs> 11. That might actually hit with the all-out attack he used. Yeah, it will hit with the all-out attack he used. Yes! yes! <laughs> Good job! Oh, my God. Um... So, so I need to also do a toughness check, and so does he. Yep. So you're looking at a toughness check for a DC 21. He's looking for a toughness check for a DC 28. All right. I am. Uh, I'm. I am uh, dazed, and uh, I don't. I don't know what happens to me in this scenario if I'm already uh, staggered, and I. It's not another stagger. The cool thing about being staggered is that if you do get dazed, it doesn't matter because you were already dazed. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, and that was a 28 that he needed. You give him his second stagger as you slam into him and knock him out. What happens? Uh, yeah, I, I just see that Rudy is, you know, he's finally starting to tear into him. And I'm like look, kind of surveying the land. Um, and I just, uh, you know, set my boosters off over the fallen remains of the tree in the center and just arc down and slam into him. Like I, I probably have my arms like crossed like an X to try to like maximize uh, force. Excellent. And you just dent into the UFO and it explodes into pieces. Um, sending skull water everywhere as the brain pan explodes out of the UFO. Gross. And the little glassy-eyed Santa head looks up at you from the ground as the UFO falls apart. Yeah. I'll say, I imagine I slam through it. I'm covered in, in skull water as I, like, spun around on the ground, as I, like, tumbled onto the ground and then land in a heap because I also damaged myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This was an epic fight, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Siren, your ritual is ready to go, and it is your turn. Yay! Uh, then I am... Because I am no longer dazed, I am going to fly in here and splash water on Santa. <laughs> I'll wake him up. Uh, so go ahead and give me a d20 plus 10. Twenty-one. Excellent. You are able to wake Santa up with the twenty-one. 
Um, so dumb. You splash water on him, and the magic of your spell sort of seeps into his body, and he staggers awake for a moment and looks around with sort of a terrified, wild look in his eyes. He says, Oh, Cassandra, it's very good to see you again. Would you, Hi, Santa. Would you care to untie me? Yes. And that will take yeah. us out of combat as Santa Claus sort of stands up and says, Well, I see that you have... He looks at the hole in his roof. <laughs> Boom and blast him. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the party, pal. Well, I think Rudy <laughs> did a lot of... It was a team effort. It's no matter, it's just stuff. And I'm grateful for you for getting rid of those miscreants who had stolen my identity and taken my workshop. We're only five months from Christmas. I don't have time for these kinds of delays. It's very true. Um, one got away, the one with the mask. Really fascinating mask. But he got away. Mm. I'm sorry. It's no matter. I trust you and your friends to find him and bring him to justice as you always do. That is why you are all on the nice list. Thank and you, you know what? I'm going to add Daedalus to the nice list. I'm going to undo his his cop-out. <laughs> his grandfather did yeah, wait, I thought I was grandfathered into the to the nice list. I've just been completely out of the loop entirely. <laughs> you were just off the list. <laughs> I was and truly. He, um... Oh, um, and I need you to take presents to um the fish in the sea. They helped too before we got here, and I said I would put in a good word for them to you, so hopefully you can give them some gifts in at uh, that time of year as well. Also very important that you know that, that Rudy showed an immense, um, showed an immense amount of loyalty. Yes. Or no, wait, no, Jingle. Sorry, Jingle. Is Jingle, yes. Jingle is a good elf, despite his protestations. <laughs> and I will see what I can do on behalf of the fish in the sea. Thank you. We're going to need a lot more presents. A little bit goes a long way. Only the nice fish, right? There's an internal debate on who the fish consider to be the nice fish. Um, I will always leave that up to your discretion because you have the proper lists. Yes. I'll get Jingle on it. He will, uh, he will oversee the naughty and nice fish list. But if they're if fish are on the naughty list, don't. I hope he doesn't go and club them. <laughs> well, it would be better than giving them coal. That's probably bad for the ocean. <laughs> yes. But thank you, Freedom League, for setting me free and for saving Christmas, even though it's only July. Of course, it's. A... But off, you must go home now. We have much cleaning to do. And he will put his finger to his nose and wiggle it, and all of you will disappear in a cloud of marshmallow fluff. Back to the beautiful Greek beach that you left behind. Oh, oh it's too hot. Oh, God. Get it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been long and, enough that the ice is probably gone. <laughs> yeah. And that's everything I've got for you guys today. Uh, that was Sleigh Ride. I hope <laughs> I want to thank my players for for doing this with me because that was wild. Um, I want to give everybody a chance to say goodbye and plug anything they want to plug, and then we'll get Troy back on to announce anything we need to announce, and we'll get out of here for the night. Starting with Calvin. All right. Um, well, yeah, this was a fun game. I <laughs> love the little concert we had in the middle. That was unexpected and super fun and the best part of tabletop rpgs is doing that kind of thing um as for plugging stuff i mean i guess i want to plug the untold stories project because i'm there on mondays in various superhero games um and i guess maybe i, I don't know i feel weird plugging my own channel but we do, do it podcast 
<laughs> we do weekly GM podcasts over there where we discuss recaps of previous games and different systems like Pathfinder or Lancer. Uh, occasionally, we talk Mutant Masterminds as well and Starfinder and other stuff. Uh, or we just, you know, have discussions on what's going on on the other side of the screen and answer user questions or viewer questions, I should say, and things like that. And occasionally stream games over there as well. So that's the Win With Dice channel on YouTube. Um, yeah, check it out. It's a lot of fun. And I'll pass to Joe again. Uh, yes, once again, I'm Joe, and uh, I also play on uh, USP games, uh, mostly on Tuesday nights. Um, come on uh, by, and you can check me out as Carol Irons, the murder mama of the group. I am a lot more gruff and vicious with Carol than I was with Siren. Um, she's a lot of fun to play. And um, I had a lot of fun. It was great to meet RC and Sean. Thank you guys both so much for joining. This was hilarious and amazing. So thank you, Alex and everyone with Green Running. Um, and I'm going to pass it to RC. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I'm RC. Uh, I am the game master at Masks and Mayhem, which is a Mutants Masterminds third edition podcast. Uh, we are, yeah, like I said, about three and a half years have been going. We just finished our latest arc, which uh, the episode released yesterday. And coming up, our, our next episode, which should be releasing July 29th, we'll be featuring uh, someone special who GM'd this game tonight um, as, as our first ever uh, guest player character. Uh, so yeah, uh, check us out, uh, masksmayhem.com or at MayhemCast, uh, wherever you can find podcasts or social media. And I'll pass to Sean. Uh, as I said, I'm Sean. I'm, I usually hang out uh, in the comments for the Mutants Masterminds Mondays. I don't really have anything to plug, but I did back a recent uh, Kickstarter that I know our GM, Alex, will be contributing to something on subversive sci-fi. And I backed at a level that I am going to be on the Go, Go Show podcast, uh, band podcast in the in the future. And I did ask Alex to hopefully be one of the people on there with me. I will do that. I will be there. <laughs> hopefully, we'll be talking about the essay I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done with it. I need to get it over to the professor, but I'm really excited about it. It's a really fun book. It's all about science fiction movies that broke the rules. So, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. yeah. I should have written about the thing or Splanta. Splanta the movie. Splanta. Splanta. Can we get stats for Splanta? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will get stats for Splanta because that was the surprise fourth evil Santa Claus that was new for this. Who knew Puddle Santa? Yeah. Was, he was the creepiest. What? 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 <laughs> I really. No, that's my fault. The, the well, you know, you're at a poll. Even if it's the wrong one, you got to do a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Homage. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hey, uh, all of you, um, Sean, Calvin, Joe, uh, RC, you had me rolling through this whole entire. I mean, so funny. Here, I'm trying to make this stupid picture of like farting puffer fish. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm like crying. I'm laughing so hard. It was so great seeing you. And Alex, as per usual, what a great job. Super, super fun. You know, folks, if you're interested in, you know, this is what we do uh, for a living. And we've set it up over on the, um, on the Mutants and Masterminds Patreon that basically it's just this every day for hours and hours and hours. And so you can join. You go to patreon.com slash mutants, A-N-D, masterminds. And I think you can get in for like three bucks a month. That's pretty That's darn deal. Shit. Yeah. Great value. Um, when we're not doing these things, we are sharing uh, essays. We are uh, providing alternative rule sets. We are doing play tests. We're doing, um, well, we're making mistakes and then correcting them. I mean, it's just beautiful. Doing second edition <laughs> conversions. Where... Oh, yeah. How many crooks are in that crooks? I think there's 36 or 48 crooks. I'm, conver I'm converting like 20 of them. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I think we've so far we've gotten through 12, maybe 12, I think. Something like, Something like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and with many more to come. And so we do those twice a week. Uh, and then we try to, you know, uh, throw in some surprises like folks who are um, uh, paying pals of the Patreon, as we like to call them, the three P's. Um, is that three P's? Anyway, they get a copy of. Um, 
what was it we gave them? The Guide to Starhaven, which that group also helped us write and put together. And, and uh, they voted on who's leading and, you know, uh, who's, who's the sort of political leader and uh, created some just gnarly creatures with us. Um, uh, really super fun stuff. And uh, yeah, come join us. We have a, we have a good time. And, um, and it's not to be overly braggy, but they did vote for my government for Star Haven. They sure did. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did. Um, but yeah, so fantastic time today. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, also, hey, folks, if you've got an idea for an event or you want to do some kind of, um, you want Alex to come do some GMing for you, um, preferably like 10 consecutive days in a row, uh, send a note to <laughs> Let's Play at Green Ronin dot com um uh no but alex not these next 10 days <laughs> no i'm getting ready for the 10 gen days con's coming time. up you gotta leave me alone for the next 10 days <laughs> right. that is right so while we let alex uh go you know hibernate or do whatever uh whatever you do in ohio to recharge make bad choices make bad choices all right all right you've got the time to do that we'll give you 10 days um all right friends thanks again everybody thanks for watching engagement and all that stuff was a lot of fun we will see you again uh, soon have we picked our next um actual play for the patreon yet uh we have a date for it i'm pretty sure it's in yeah. august uh or you know what it might not be selected yet it's not on my calendar but it is august so um a day in august we'll be doing this again and um uh, picking our our friends from the um, now I gotta say, you know, uh, we might want to always do this blend of the USP cast and uh, Patreon folks, or just do something special with the uh, uh, USP uh, Super uh, Untold Stories Project. Is that right? Untold Stories USP. Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, with that being said, sort of said, um, we will let everyone go. Thanks again for joining us. It was a blast. Take care.